And it's been an absolute joy to oh, spend two lovely. hours with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Great me. Great to see yeah. you. You and, take care. Uh, yeah, see you soon. Yeah. Happy Easter if I don't see you before. <laughs> um, I'm going to see you after the break. It's a date. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> It's Friday! Welcome to Sewing Straight, everyone. We got there. The weekend is looming. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm Stuart Hillard. Uh, we've got a fantastic day up ahead. My goodness, a bumper day of guests and fabulous, fabulous projects. You're going to have so much fun. It's as young as you feel day, which I'm all for. What say you, Delphine Brooks? Young as you feel, day. Eh? <laughs> How old do you feel today? <laughs> I don't know, I need to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, as young, I'd like it to be as young as I'd like to be, day. Yeah. It's also um, National Seal Day. National I sometimes Day. feel like a beached whale. <laughs> oh, I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here. We're, we made it. We made it. Right, let's start our day. Oh, as we always do. Oh, it's Talk Like William Shakespeare Day. Verily and anon, let us do our early bird. <laughs> An early bird by any other name would be as wonderful value as this. It's Bosel batting seam tape. Now, um, I think it's really important that we use all our resources to the best of our abilities. I love scrap quilting. I love using up all my little bits and bobs. And one of the things that I have loads of, and I'm sure you do, is batting oddments, the bits you trim off, the, the bit that's left over when you cut out the piece you need. What do you do with those? Well, we use them, of course, but we don't always want to use them for a small project. Sometimes we want to use them for something bigger, and that's where Bosel batting tape comes in. It's a roll of um, nine metres of tape, and essentially it's got a fusible on one side. You can feel that. It's a little bit rough, a little bit scratchy. The other side is smoother. So here's what you do. You take your batting. I've got two pieces here, okay? Could be large pieces, could be small. The best thing to do is to layer them, overlap them by perhaps about an inch or so. And then what you want to do is use some big scissors and cut a gently curving line, not a straight line, just a very gently curving line through the layers. OK, remove your little bits. And now you've got this curved line. OK, that just seems less visible, it will be invisible actually, when you actually um, come to put it together. And then you're going to lay your batting seam tape over the top and it's a decent width so it's going to cover the curves. Okay, and then you want to use a pressing cloth, a bit of calico, a bit of fabric, whatever you want to do. Um, lay that over the top and then I've got my iron ready and I'm going to press it. Okay. Love the light. Look at that, my Aliso. Look. Ha ha. Love that. You don't want to iron straight onto the batting or onto the tape. You want to just make sure and just make sure that it's fusing. You can use a bit of steam as well. It will take longer to seam through a pressing cloth. And I'm actually using this doubled up. There we go. That's little press. And um, I personally like to use the batting tape on both sides, so I will flip my batting over. You get 9.1 metres, so you get plenty. Move that over. Now, we are going lower. Normally 10.99. We're going lower. You will pay the lowest price. Let's do our early bird price. It is 8.99 a roll. Ri um, and think about this. The value isn't about the tape. The value is how much am I saving by being able to use all of my bits of batting up. And there you go now. What was some scraps is now a beautiful whole piece of batting. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. What you absolutely do. I mean, some people ladder stitch. 
takes a lot of time. Some people zigzag through their machine. Please don't do that. The reason why I say don't do that is because zigzagging over two edges creates a depression in the batting and you will see that through your quilt it's visible um, so it's not a good scheme uh, not a good way to do it the batting tape is brilliant it's completely seamless it's flat it doesn't affect the batting at all it's just a brilliant way of doing it. And of course, you can create a patchwork batting. So create columns and then join the columns together. And you can end up with a queen size batting or a king size batting out of all of your scraps for $8.99. I also love the fact that it's Bosel because I absolutely love me some Bosel products. Brilliant quality, does a great job. And also that is... Um, you know, it's going to hold it securely. Um, it's not going to come apart while you're quilting. Um, you know as well, if you don't want to make large pieces, what about things like cushion fronts or even for bags? You know, I'm, in fact, I'm going to be keeping this back because on Sunday I'm making a bag and I need to join some batting together because I'm using up some scraps of polyester batting actually. That was 80-20, but I can use this on polyester batting, wool, silk, anything at all. What you wanna make sure is use um, a temperature on your iron, which is sympathetic to the batting. So for example, a cotton batting, you're fine with a three spot. Still use your pressing cloth because you, you don't wanna get that heat directly on the batting tape. But if you're fusing to something like silk, use a one spot. It might take a little bit longer to fuse together, but um, it will do a brilliant job. So I'm going to use that at the weekend to join my polyester batting for my hobo bag. Love a hobo. That's your batting tape. It's our early bird today. You're saving two pounds. It's eight ninety nine. Now, almost half the stock has gone. Remember, the value isn't the roll of tape. It's what it does. It's the fact that this is going to transform your batting scraps, which you're holding on to because we can't bear to throw these things away, can we? You know, they cost us, they, those scraps cost the same money inch for inch as the big, as the big piece. But you're not going to use it when it's little bits. You're not going to use it when it's little bits. Join it together, turn your scraps into a full-size quilt batting, and then you will use that. You will use that. $8.99. Yeah, hundreds of these have gone. If you want to get your batting tape, grab it now. Also really useful to stash because um, it's the kind of thing, it doesn't take up a lot of room on the shelf. And actually having a couple of these in stock means that you're always going to be able to use all of your batting scraps up. You can upcycle. You can also use this to join things like pieces of bosel in our form. Um, I'm still going to quilt it. You're still going to quilt it together. So you use this to join batting or, you know, those kind of batting-like scraps. So don't use it to join fabric together. Um, it's not like a wonder under. It's different to that. But it's really light. It's sort of barely there. And on the batting itself, it hasn't affected the weight. It doesn't, you can't really feel anything there. It's just completely smooth. There's no ridge. And this is the thing, if you try and stitch them together, you can end up with a ridge. If you zigzag them together, you end up with a squishing of the batting. It flattens it down. So you end up with this really obvious line. Um, still do your undulating line, but try and keep that undulating line within the width of the batting. The batting tape is about, it's about an inch and a quarter wide, I think. Four centimetres, inch and a half. It's an inch and a half. So, so long as your undulating line is just within about an inch parameter, so don't go hugely wobbly, otherwise your tape won't cover it. Now, loads of you are multi-buying this at the reduced price. I'm going to flip it over and just show you one more time how it works. So you've got your two layers 
of batting and I overlapped them first of all. So I'll just show you again. If I overlap my batting like that, so it's about an inch, inch and a half overlapped. And then you will cut through both layers, just a gently wobbling line. And that means then when you take out the little bits, you have this curved line to join that fits together perfectly. And it's a lot less noticeable than a straight line. It's just about disguising the fact, if it's a straight line, our, our eyes sort of notice a straight line, a straight join. Whereas if you put it on the wiggle, it's less noticeable. Um, pop your batting tape over the top. And then I'm just using a pressing cloth for this. I, um, I think possibly if you used a very low iron, you might be able to just iron straight on top. But I don't like ironing batting, you see. Jen is messaged in to ask, can this tape be used to join polyester wadding? Jenny, absolutely, Jenny, you can use it to join polyester wadding, silk, bamboo, any of the waddings. Um, the thing to do, obviously, you're going to use a, um, a cooler iron. You only want to use a one spot for a polyester, but... Um, you can iron it. I know a lot of people are really, really sort of um, don't like ironing wadding. Everyone says it sort of flattens it, but I always iron my waddings around the edges. When I apply my um, binding, I always iron it back. And there we go. That's attached. Like I say, if you want to be belt and braces, you can do it on both sides, and I usually do. The other thing as well is I've been, when I've been long arm quilting, I've actually been like seven eighths of the way through quilting a quilt, and I've found that I'm about a two inches short on the batting. So what I can do then is, because it's loaded, you can't take it off, um, I can just go in there with an iron and just join a piece of batting on. So it's uh, got me out of some tight spots before now. But there we go. It was two. Now it's one. To become one. Let's do the menu. <laughs> Let's do the menu. So we're starting off at 8 a.m. with the Sanderson Garden Path Quilt with our very own Delphine Brooks. At 9 o'clock, it's the Decoupage Collection Quilt with Amanda Little. Absolutely beautiful. This. Let me show you this really quickly. How pretty is this? How gorgeous. Look. So pretty. Gorgeous, summery florals, amazing border, but also that lovely black and white fabric in there, which just kind of, I don't know, what a sophisticated quilt. Gorgeous. Brand new collection, brand new quilt design. Now at 10 o'clock, Delphine's back with the Amelie and the Fleur bag. So one we've seen before, one brand new. Look at these fabulous, fabulous day bags. Messenger bag maybe a laptop bag. I absolutely love the flap options. Practical, stylish. Delphine's done it again. At 11 o'clock, sewing room makes with Amanda Little, a gorgeous little trio of sewing room uh, pieces. And then at 12 o'clock, I have got the decoupage collection. So you'll have seen it at 9 a.m. in Amanda's brand new, um, brand new quilt. But at 12 o'clock, I've got the collection by the half meter. It's really pretty. I think you're gonna love it. Um, not all of the fabrics are in the quilt. So you'll see some new ones, including a really fabulous, huge panel, which is an absolute knockout. Now, of course, you can always jump online and have a look uh, at everything that's coming up in today's show by going to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. And if you click on watch live, you can watch us, you can message us, but you can also scroll through what we've already seen on air and what's coming up on today's shows, including the Amelie and the Fleur bag. You can grab your pattern or kit now. We've got Best Press, Citrus Grove. Hello, hello. Uh, we've all had a little sniff. It's lush. Uh, quilt patterns, tools, fabrics, you name it. There's the decoupage fabric. How pretty is that? Um, and then later on, you'll find the rest of the decoupage collection. Brand new bags here, the Amelie 
from Delphine. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And also, of course, the fleur, which Delphine brought on air on my birthday. Mm. Yeah, very beautiful, very beautiful. Loads in there. Have a look. If you want to get ahead, there's Amanda Little Sewing Storage Trio. Perfect for your sewing room or for taking away. It's the time of year now we all start thinking about having little cheeky weekends away, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking Portugal. Oh, no. oh, the green wine, the green wine, the fish stew, the sunshine. Well, okay, let's get into it. First thing first, Delphine, welcome. Hello. Wonderful to have your company. Ah, oh, good to see you. Surrounded by beautifulness. Oh, yes, absolutely. What a beautiful quilt. Stunning, absolutely stunning quilt. It's beautiful and the value is amazing. It's a big quilt. It's brand new from Sanderson. $179.99. I might have some good news on that. It is 183 by 230. So this is a double queen size quilt. Yeah, it's huge. I'd expect this to be over 200 pounds. And this is our starting price. That is a big healthy wadge of fabric. 72 inches by 90. Yeah, call it 90, 90 and a half. 72 by 90, so perfect double or queen. Oh my goodness, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. The size of the quilt, the fact that it's Sanderson fabric. I mean, that's, ah, oh, this is beautiful. For me, Sanderson is kind of country house interiors. It's those beautiful kind of posh country house, little bit country, a little bit sort of, you know, I, I just love it. I just love it. Um, they are world renowned for their beautiful fabrics. That is stunning. You'll also notice as well in there, no blenders, no white on white. This is all about the beautiful Sanderson prints. It is absolutely gorgeous. A sort of blended floral quilt with these gorgeous navies, teal, soft greens. There's a little bit of very soft golden yellow in there as well. Um, and that beautiful turquoise, just a very soft turquoise. It is absolutely stunning, isn't it? And there is so much fabric here. All of these pieces of fabric are big, healthy chunks of fabric. Now, we all expected this kit to be over 200 pounds. I'm amazed. It's Sanderson. It's 72 inches by 90 inches. It is absolutely beautiful. There's no blenders in there. It's all Sanderson fabric. It's such a lovely quilt. We all expected this to be over 200 pound. Our start price is 179.99. It is not staying there. It is not staying there. If you've already checked out, you're paying $149.99. And everybody that gets involved now is going to pay $149.99 on that. Now, there, there are split pays. $49.99 to get this home. Three split pays. Brilliant. It's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. You've got your quilt top here. All your fabric for your quilt top and your binding. Absolutely stunning. Now, I'm just going to open out. Let me show you. Let me show you. <laughs> this, this is one of the fabrics. <laughs> Are you kidding? Look, all of that, all of that. That's one of the fabrics. Look at this one. Oh, well, I want a shirt made out of that, Delphine. <laughs> <laughs> all of these, all of these. Look at this. This design is absolutely iconic, Sanderson. I did actually have some of this once. Look. You know what? You could always, Delphine, don't you think you could mix some white on white? Yeah, it definitely makes And yeah. 
take a fabric out or mm. if you wanted to. Look, every single piece of fabric is a huge piece of fabric. Absolutely amazing. And I think as well, it's got a lovely cottagey feel to it. Um, this fabric here is absolutely stunning. Look at this one. That is just so pretty. And everything about this fabric and this quilt sort of screams classy, mm. doesn't it? Sort of high-end designer, really special. And spring and summer, you know, absolutely lovely. Every single one of these fabrics is a really big chunk. It's absolutely gorgeous. How pretty is that? $149.99 is your price. That's an amazing price. We all expected this to be over £200. I think at £200, that would have been the right money yeah. for Sanderson for 72 by 90 inches. Brand new, beautiful. And it's such a gorgeous colourway, isn't it? Um, and I think in Sanderson, that's something you can really... It's heirloomy, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's class, it's classy, it's classic, um, gorgeous. Now, split pay is a great option on uh, products uh, just to make them more affordable. So the way it works is this. Today, it's three split pays um, on this quilt. When you come to check out, split pay comes up as an option. If you choose the split pay option, you'll pay $49.99 today. You pay $49.99 next month and $49.99 a month after that. So it's split the cost over three months. It doesn't cost you one pence more to choose split pay. There's no interest. There are no forms to fill in. There are no credit checks. Literally, it's a box that you tick and say, yes, I'm going to take split pay. You don't have to wait until you've paid three and then get it. You make a payment today of $49.99. We send you the quilt kit this week. When everyone's checked out, we have got less than 20 of this quilt kit left already. We are only 22 minutes in. It's so busy today. So busy today. Um, if you want to get this home, I would not hang about. I would not hang about. Beautiful, beautiful fabrics and so much of it. Also, of course, you haven't got to buy a separate pattern for this. Your pattern is included. Um, Level-wise, Delphine. Oh, it's so easy. It looks really complicated because it, it is such a beautiful quilt, but it is really, really simple. Even if it is a beginner, it's very easy. Big, easy enough for a beginner? I, I'd say so. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, absolutely gorgeous. 100% cotton. Beautiful Sanderson designs. The fabric is gorgeous. This is some of it. Poor cats having to fold all the rest. And there are metres and metres and metres of fabric in this quilt. You are getting so much uh, for your money. It is a nice, easy, beginner level quilt. I'm just going to come across Delphine just to have a closer look. So um, what's the construction here? It's actually made up of three blocks. That's all it is. Okay. So um, if you have a look at, say, from here. Okay. So this is like a quarter mm -hmm. of the quilt. So it's, it's that repeated. But you've just, all you have to think about is the placement. So the blocks will rotate. Okay. So it's exactly the same block. You haven't got, a, each block isn't made up of a different squares. So is this a block here? Yep. So that's a block. That's a block there. Yeah. So that's just, a, but you see how it's just been rotated. Yeah. Round. So that's all squares. Yeah. It's just all this squares. is a block here. Yep. I'm seeing a big half square triangle. Yeah. Two smaller ones in a square. And I'd say that's probably the hardest bit. Oh. Which awesome. is really, really easy. And, and then, then the other block? block is this one here, this one. which is made up of just a nine patch. Oh. So nine patches and half square triangles. Yeah. To create something as beautiful as this. It is absolutely stunning, isn't it? I'm just gonna just lovely. I'll move that iron just out of the way for a second. It is absolutely beautiful. And I think as well, Delphine, when most people think of a patchwork quilt, yeah. 
it's something like this, isn't it? It is beautiful, absolutely mm. stunning. Gorgeous. Very clever, very clever design. It's a clever design. Would also really work well if your home's very neutral. Mm. Creams or putty colours, greys, silvers, tans, any of those sort of colours, that is going to fit in. Mm. It's going to look beautiful. But if your home is kind of really richly coloured, lots of deep dark teals and navies, and then it's also going to fit in. It's almost quite regal. I think. Yeah, it is. Mm. Well, it reminds me of kind of country houses. Mm. You know, there's like big country houses mm. that you go and have a look around mm. at the weekend. It's got that sort of look. It's beautiful. Yeah. We're having a weekend party in the country. <laughs> Bring your oh, own I quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. Right. Loads of you checking out your baskets. I've got way less than 20 chances left. Remember, you've got split pay option if you want. $49.99 is all you need to pay today, or you can pay the full amount. Either way, we'll send you the kit in three to five working days. You're saving on this. You're saving £30. We all thought the kit would be over £200. It's 72 inches wide by 90 inches in length, so it's going to fit beautifully on a double, a queen, a king, because I like to put the, the, that away longer across yeah. the end of the that's the way i'll that's the way i'll put you. it yeah yeah absolutely gorgeous uh beautiful beautiful quilt delphine could you show me how to make a quilt it's very easy Great. yeah i can <laughs> yeah so obviously instructions very very simple i recommend that you just do block for block before you go straight in and making all the blocks at the same time so uh with every time i make a quilt i always spray everything with a bit of best press first because it makes it easier for the cutting and you know that if any um the fabric's not going to shrink or anything like that and it makes it just easier to work with even though we're mainly working with squares and strips it just makes your life a whole lot easier. So I recommend you use that. And did you see, we've got the brand new Citrus Grove now. I know this isn't smelly vision, but, oh, that, like I have a bowl of like lemons and limes at home, mostly to go in drinks, it's got to be said. <laughs> yeah. But, that is the smell of that bowl of fresh lemons and limes. Mm. It's really, it's not overpowering. It's not sort of, oh, takes the inside of your nose off. Some, some are like, yeah. It's just that lovely, fresh, it's got quite a natural smell to it. Five, well, 499 mils, let's get it right, Stuart, and a um, trigger dispenser. So no propellants, CFC free and all that. Um, absolutely gorgeous stuff, 11.99. It's always worth doing your fabrics with best. Yeah, it just makes your room smell nice as well. There is that. As Mary Ellen says, it makes ironing almost fun. I, see, I don't mind a bit of ironing. I, yeah. I quite enjoy it. Radio one, podcast? Podcast, always a podcast. Get the podcast on. Yeah, podcast on. Yeah. I, I really enjoy ironing. Yeah. yeah, don't tell my husband that. It'll make me... <laughs> So, so yeah, very, very simple. Even all the key on the instructions as well. You can, be, it's not even just like a block colour. They even actually show the pattern on there. So you can't go wrong. So uh, you start off with, you'll be cutting. So block one, I'm going to actually show you the nine patch. Really, really simple to do. So um, you're going to basically sew uh, strips together from the width of the fabric. Obviously, I'm just going to show you a smaller version of that. So everything is with a quarter inch seam. Try and use the same thread throughout as well. What colour thread would you use for piecing? I use just a, I used a plain, just a plain cream. Cream, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. I wouldn't use anything dark. Just keep it, just keep it nice and yeah. simple. Yeah. So I just uh, I've been really really prepped really today, and I've got to plug me foot in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's been wrong with me. I, so many things I haven't done this morning that I normally do. Yeah, I'm like oh. I don't know, I've Something been for ages air. and I've not realised the, <laughs> the uh, foot's not even plugged in. Yeah. So, quarter inch seam throughout. Uh, line up your fabric. So you don't, no need to pin. While Delphine sews, just want to say a few lovely good mornings. Pam says good morning, lovely Stuart. And equally as lovely, Delphine. More lovely, more lovely. Byron says, morning, Stuart. How are you? Looking really well. Thank you very much. Uh, Claire says, morning, Stuart and all. Jan says, morning, Stuart and all. I have the seam tape, but wasn't sure if it was only suitable for Bozal. Thank you for the tips on using it. No, brilliant for 
uh, yeah, made by Bozel, great quality, but suitable for all battings. Uh, uh, Donna says, good morning, everyone. Steph says, morning, Stuart. It's also National Goof Off Day today, so everyone just have fun and remember to eat a sticky bun. I couldn't agree more. Good. I'm trying to be good now too. So you'll sew your strips together and then it does it even tells you the where to um iron your seams. So it say it will Ooh. say iron your seams towards fabric A, for example. Yeah. Because what it what it what it's telling you to do is doing it that way. So very important that you do follow that because it makes you buddying up the seams a lot easier. Great. So I always go on the back first and then I do the front absolutely love those fabrics absolutely so they're really good quality as well they're really nice fabrics fabulous nice and, soft. and can i just say for the record that's not me so i get accused no of <laughs> no it wasn't me Do you know i spotted that yesterday i don't know what it is no i don't i can't i can't tell what it is no these fabrics are lovely we talk about making heirlooms and something can look like an heirloom but if it isn't beautiful quality fabric it's not going to last long enough to become an heirloom these are really beautiful quality fabrics worth your time and effort oh definitely loads of you have checked out on this by the way i do just need to let you know a little stock warning this quilt kit is selling out really quickly so many of you have gone for this. It's amazing value, a 72 inch by 90 inch quilt, easy enough for a beginner, gorgeous enough for any of us to enjoy making and, and a quilt you're really going to enjoy, but flying out, flying out. So I've, all you do is sew your strips together and then you're going to subcut them. All the measurements are obviously in the instructions and you're going to do that a couple of times. So you're going to do that three times, so in a different order. So that's the ones that I've just made. So let me just get these other ones over here. And you're going to line them up. Delphine, can I ask for a quick tip, please? When yeah. you're doing strip piecing, where you're sewing long strips together, mm -hmm. some, some of us get into terrible bother with kind of our strips getting misshapen, bowing, getting yeah. a bit distorted. Any tips for... Uh, you don't sew them all the same direction because that will make it that will make it like that banana shape. Yep. So if you do one one way and then one the other, especially if you're doing the width of fabric, but with this quilt it's quite forgiving. I'll rather than do the full width, I'd actually cut that in half and do it because the wastage is, is it's minimal anyway. Because gotcha. if you can read the instructions and see how much you're going to be getting out of each one, if you yep. just do a few little calculations in your head, yep. that way it's going to be a lot more accurate. So rather than do the full width, I'll actually shorten it down as well. So one way and then back the other way. I love that tip. Love that tip. Thank you. So then we're just going to line them up in the order that we want them to be. So see, that's pretty. And that's really that's what I mean. It's just such a simple quilt to do. Block one. So and that's so this is block one. So what we're going to do is sew these right sides together, and then already, is that the right one? I mean, just double check what I'm doing. That's <laughs> that way. Hey. That's that way, and that's that way, and that's that way. Yeah. Okay. So then. Because those um, seams have been pressed in the different directions, so now I can see and feel it with my thumb and my finger. There's no need for clips, that that just sits nicely. There we are, so that sits yeah. nicely together. And you can feel it because there's no bumps and it's completely flat. Cool. I, um, I think that's one of the best reasons for following the instructions in terms of which way to press the seams because mm. you'd got it around the wrong way and you spotted it straight away because the seams weren't butting. They weren't, exactly, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I would have sewn that and then it would have been would have been out. Can I just say as well, Delphine, as always, fabulous nails. Oh, thank the you. colour, amazing. <laughs> they're actually, they're actually black. But they just, they paint them black and then they just rub like oh, is a, it chrome? Like a powder on it, yeah. Really cool. So that's one. And then again, I'm just going to put that one on. And again, I can tell because the way the seams have been pressed and you just pinch it so it sits nicely. And you know you're going to get nice, accurate seams. So beginners, you can do this. Intermediate and advanced quilters, what a joyful quilt to make. 
loads of you getting involved this morning. It's been a busy morning, which is wonderful, but it also brings with it an issue, doesn't it? That things can disappear before your very eyes and where normally you'd have time to watch the demo and then check out, I would check out your basket now. Uh, morning, Stuart and Delphine. This is Michelle in Lincolnshire. Two of my favourite people and good morning to your team. Oh, They're in the gallery. Can we wave from gallery cam? There we go. There's, there's Ollie on directing and Hannah hiding behind the graphics. There she is. <laughs> ah. And Kat's here as well. Kat's here. Oh, Kat. Oh. Kat's here. There she is. Hey, uh, you got a muffin. Ooh. She's so lucky. Kat can eat so much stuff and she just stays so slim. Yeah. yeah. I know. And there you go, that's block one. Amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant. Christine's got in touch from the Isle of Man to say, Delphine, please can you tell me which machine you're using? Thank you. Uh, my, the 720 Pro. That's my go-to machine. From Elna. From Elna, yeah. What do you love about it? It's fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it does 1,250 stitches per minute. So as you can see. Wow. And it's solid. So it's, it's, it's made of metal. So it's a metal base. Very wide, nice big throat space. So really good for quilting. It doesn't have a... Um, Free arm. A free arm. But then, once you get used to not having one, it, it's absolutely fine anyway. So I've, because it is so big and it is, you've got so much space to work with, you don't really miss that anyway. But cool. also, because of how fast it goes, because of how solid it is, it doesn't shake the tables no. or anything like that. And it's just really, really accurate as well. It's bordering on an industrial, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's semi, like, well, I say it's semi-industrial. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I love how the, the, the very first thing, the most important... Fast. 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 Because you are known for being a fast sewer. Yeah, I'm, I'm a busy mama. I haven't got yeah. time to prefer a slow machine. The quicker yeah. the better. Yeah, yeah. So. You're dog mama now. I am on, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my little Billy. <laughs> oh, I love him so much. Oh, yeah, he, new addition. Yeah, he makes me so happy. That's beautiful. He's your best mate, isn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Though, though he was sat on my sewing chair yesterday, he wouldn't let me do any work. Oh. So sweet. Policy control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I couldn't sit, so I just had to stand up and just do a load of bond away because I didn't have the heart to kick him off the chair. No, he's already established himself as he's, the boss. He has. <laughs> My little bitty boy. Um, just got the slide up actually for the 720, which is absolutely Delphine's machine of choice. This is the machine you have at home? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't be without it. No, definitely. Uh, metal construction, semi industrial, amazing capabilities. You can see, can't you, actually the threading system and all, it's, it's like a, an industrial machine. And I've actually, I've never, I've never known a domestic sewing machine do 1,200 plus stitches per minute. Yeah, that is it's so quick. Unheard and of. even, it's, 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 that, it, it's that time saving that even if your bobbin runs out, you can put another bobbin in and then the bobbin winder works on a separate motor. <sighs> so you can be sewing and doing your bobbin at the same time. Busy mama. Busy. Busy, busy. Busy mama. So, block two. Go. Block two. So, very exactly the same method as before, but this time the strips are just a bit smaller. So, again, a bit more accurate piecing, but as long as you're best pressing and pressing the seams in the direction that they're telling you in the instructions, you're going to have perfect seams. So, this is that time you, you mentioned about accurate seam allowance. You've got blocks of different size strips, they need to end up the same size. Yeah. So check your seam allowance before you start. Yeah, and definitely just be con just be consistent with your thread, yeah. your your foot, even the speed as well. You know, just try and be consistent and yeah. just keep. You know, because even though your seams are buddied up and you know that they're going to be absolutely fine, but just keep lining them up as you go along. There's no need to pin or clip no. these. Well, even just quick checks, like when you sew your first strip set together, before you cut it, measure the width. Mm. Just measure what those three strips sewn together have made. And if it's at all out, unpick them. Mm. And, and just make a little adjustment. Yeah. You'll be so glad you did. Because for something like this, it's such a showstopper of a quilt. Yeah. You know, and it's such a base. The, the, box are, the blocks are so basic, really. Yeah. But so you you really have got the capabilities to be able to produce something that looks 
advanced, I think. It looks like I an agree. advanced grill. I agree. And also as well, I love the fact that the blocks kind of disappear, don't they? And what you end up with is one big picture, if you like. Do you see what I mean? It, it becomes a whole. Some quilts are very much individual blocks and they're showcasing their thing. But this quilt is very much about a whole image. It's almost like a sort of... Um, you know, like the kind of the, the, the really expensive rugs you can... Yeah, you know I, yeah mean? I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that sort of Persian carpet, like a... Yeah, it's almost that look. Very beautiful. Yeah, it's very cleverly done. Very clever design. So, so again, you, you pressed your seams the way the pattern told you, so they all nest. Yep, so, now, so it just makes it easier to, uh, to sew. So just really pay attention to... The, where it's telling you to press them, it's just going to make your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to get you in the habit of pressing your seams in different directions when you know you're going to be sewing strips together, yep. or sewing squares together. And it's once you've started that habit, you know, it, it's it's one little skill to have in your toolbox that you, sure. you, it, you'll do it time and time again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Apparently, I am too devilish when it comes to cake to be good. <laughs> Fine, you, you're, you're absolutely right. But as Steph says, as Mae West once said, when I'm good, I'm bad. But when I'm bad, I'm better. Oh, I like that saying. <laughs> Words to live by. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I press the seams open. On these oh, OK. There, there's no... Um, you don't have to match these seams up to anything. Right. So, and I just... This is only a preference. It doesn't tell you this, but... It's only because it just lies really nice and flat then. Mm -hmm. And I can appreciate the back of a block as much as a front. Me too. I'm a fan of pressing seams open. Yeah, so especially on, the, you know, you can see these all going in their different directions. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it nice and flat, much yeah. easier to quilt as well. Yes. Beautiful. And then you can see the accuracy. And you can really appreciate all that hard work and cutting. See, that is absolutely pancake flat. Yeah. Which is what we want. And the seams are all perfectly aligned. If I say so myself, that's not bad. I mean, three cheers and a round of applause. Yeah. yeah very nice. Block two. Block done. two, done. Now, can I just do a little stock update, please? Because the Sanderson quilt is flying out and, as predicted, there are way more of you with this in your basket than I have available. I've got 12, 12 quick kit, quilt kits left. There are 30 of you with this in your basket. Okay, so all many, almost three times as many. Um, Kat's done an amazing job, look. You'd never have known. Shall I show you how big each piece of fabric is? I'm joking. <laughs> Not doing Where it. Oh, Not doing that. it. See, Vian's right. I am devilish. I'm naughty. Um, you get your quilt pattern, of course, all included, no separate pattern to buy. Then this absolutely divine, elegant, sophisticated, it's a cool palette. It's very classy. And these are... Uh, Sanderson. Now, I'm going to a wedding soon. Ooh, I hardly ever go to weddings. Wouldn't this make the most Those wonderful very, wedding very, present? Very wedding-y, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled um, to be going to this wedding. They're just a lovely couple, lovely family. So I'm very excited. That is very, that's a, that would make the most magnificent wedding quilt, wouldn't it? Or an anniversary or a retirement. I don't know. Beautiful, very giftable. Just delish. Um, there are now just a handful of quilt kits left. If you want to get the Sanderson Garden Path Quilt Kit, uh, you're up against over 30 people who are all competing for the same handful of quilt kits. Please check out your baskets. I've single figures, low single figures left. And how many in baskets, Hannah? Twenty-seven still in baskets, and I've only got less than a handful. Any top tips for Tracy, please? She says, "Morning, everyone. I love, love, love this quilt. As a beginner, I've not dealt with such large pieces of fabric. How would I start cutting up 
please. Oh, that's a great question. Like when it comes out of the box, yep. how do you manage that like two and a half meters of fabric? Well, what, well, it depends on how big your workspace is. So um, I've got like a large, it's probably slightly smaller than this. I just rotate myself around so it's not going to be draping over the side of a table. So for one, make sure it's not going to be weighted down because when you're going to be cutting it, it's going to pull. Yeah. So, and then that's just going to make you cutting uh, just out. So what I do first is spray it. Always spray your fabric first. Give it a good press with some best press or some starch first. And then I take off the salvage, square it up, and then that's when I cut it into my strips. Yeah. But to start with on any quilt block, even now, and I do these all the time, I will always make one block first. So I don't go straight uh. in and cut it all. Don't do that straight away. Just do one first for Music each to block. My ears. And then go in, because if you cut all that fabric and you realize you've done it wrong, yep. you'll be crying. So yep. yeah, just do it a bit at a time. Make sure it's not weighted down. Square it up, spray it, and then you're on to And I would say that's not just a tip for beginners. That's an everyone yep. tip. That's an everyone tip. Yeah. Make one block before you go any further. Yeah, I agree. And also as well, another tip, Tracy, is if you are working with yardage, you do need that that large cutting mat. Yeah. Um, just looking if we've got one. You know that kind of standard cutting mat and a 24 a by 6 ruler. inch. Yeah. Always go for a big one. A six yeah. by 24, a six and a half by 24 and a half ruler and your full size cutting mat. Not the one, the massive one that will cover a dining table, but just the kind of standard big one. It's about 18 inches yeah, by I've about got, 20. Yeah, I've got two that are permanently on my table. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The ruler, if, would you mind just showing the ruler again, please, Delphine? That's six and a half inches wide by 24 and a half inches long, 28.99. Just pop it flat on the table for me. It's definitely Thank my go-to size. Yeah, for sure. That's your basic. And then your, your cutting, your standard cutting mat, which is this one, this sort of size, that sort of size. That's your standard size. I mean, there are green ones, pink ones, you name it, but this away, this away you've got enough to put that ruler on so it's what about 23 24 inches in length and about 17 inches wide that's your basic cutting tools isn't it mm. also if the fabric comes obviously you, you know the whole width what i would also do because it because they're so well folded yeah you can fold it and cut it yeah and then that's that way that you haven't got the full length to cut yeah so I'll do that as well. Sometimes as well, I will cut a chunk off. If I've got like two and a half metres of fabric, I'll cut a chunk off and I'll just work with that. And then I'll mm. get the... You do have to be a little bit careful when you're buying a kit mm. because the chunk, you could end up with that much that, you've, that you can't use. So I tend to look and think, OK, I'm cutting two and a half inch strips. If I cut ten and a half inches off my yardage, I know I can get four two and a half inch strips and there's just a sliver to throw away um we will just do this cutting mat as well as i've mentioned it this is the hemline gold i've fallen in love with the hemline and this is such a good price tracy if you haven't got a large cutting mat this is 30 stop it it's not even 13.99 today how much is it this isn't an early bird surely <laughs> it's a gift it's a gift it's 9.99 oh, yeah. oh i wouldn't mind getting one of those i was, I was just thinking it myself yeah, could say 9.99 for that no extra postage, because remember, if you've bought anything today, you've already paid your postage. Absolutely brill. Absolutely brill. Uh, Fiona says, how nice to be invited to a wedding. Um, uh, absolutely, I can't wait. It's lovely. And Donna says, hi, both. Uh, why do you use Best Press on your material? Do you ever use this for applique work? I do. I, I use it. I, I use it for to, just to stabilise my fabrics because it just makes it easier. Because if you're going to do it for a plique, it's easier to cut, all, cut up the pieces out. The, the more stabilised the fabric, the easier to cut the pieces out. Definitely. Even if you've put bondo web on it, which obviously or whatever you're using mm -hmm. helps to cut it out. By p putting this on the fabric first, it's going to make it easier to cut out your pieces. Yeah. Actually. Sort of old-fashioned words, sizing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just easier. And it's the stuff that's often in fabric when you buy it. Uh, it makes it kind of firmer and crisper. 
Um, but this is a starch alternative uh, called Best Press. It is fab. I do use this for applique as well. So I like to do starch and press applique. It's in all of my books. Essentially, you paint the seam allowance with this straight mm. out of the bottle with a paintbrush. And you can bend it over. Use your iron yeah. just to turn it over and press it. And it becomes this crisp edge for applique. Um, as I said, and, and also if you've got things like the the circle. Oh yes, so you can make it look like it's a needle t needle turn of yeah. PK. So it's like Turning a cheating, but it works. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Best press, absolutely love it. Now the cutting mat. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep this for as long as stocks last today. Nine ninety nine, it's huge. And also as well, it's a really sturdy board. Inches on one side, twenty three inches by seventeen. On the other side, centimeters. And of course, as well, you've got your angle lines. You can use this with rotary cutters. You can use this with craft knives, exacto knives, things like that. Very stylish. I think it's gorgeous in the black with the gold markings. Who doesn't love gold? Oh, very posh. Yeah, very posh. Cla well, this morning's all about classy, isn't it? It certainly is. Well, wow. Sanders and Quill, <laughs> classy. You and me, classy. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> now, block three, please. Block three. Easy, easy. So you've got your square. So you're going to just um, cut the square in half once on the diagonal. And all you're going to do is position your triangles as so. So what you're going to do, you want to make sure you will have that little dog ear hanging off the edge. You want that because that's going to uh, be nice and smooth because that's your quarter of an inch. You want it to hang over the back. So when you line up your pieces, line up the straight edge from that corner and so downwards. So do one first and then press the seam open. You can just do it with your fingers though. So... Oh, stop warning, 28 of you have the last six quilt kits in your baskets. One bounce back, so I've got six quilt kits left. Almost 30 of you have it in your baskets. Um, just wanted to update you there. So sew it on, press it back. You're yeah. still not trimming off that dog ear. Leave no, it on I for can, now. I can leave that on for now. And then you press the other, little press, sew the other one on. How classy do these Sanderson fabrics look? Gorgeous. And then I'm just going to press that one back. I think this is when the dog ear makes sense because this is where you get your seam allowance from, isn't it? Yeah. So there we go. And then that's, I'd say that's the hardest bit. That wasn't hard. <laughs> no, it's not. And there we Look go. At that. And then. Oh, now, can we just point out as well? Because I know for, for a lot of beginner quilters, this throws them. The, the, there's extra fabric. The, the square doesn't go right up to the, to the line. Do you know what I mean? Let me come over and point out what I mean. I remember seeing a friend doing this lovely patchwork piecing and they got to this stage and then he trimmed, he trimmed this off. Oh, no, no, no. Because in his head, this needed to go right to the edge. No. But it doesn't, does it? No, because that's going to be sewn over with the seam allowance. That's your seam allowance. So you're going to have your bigger triangle now, like so. And then what we're going to do is that you want to line it up at the corners. So again, take your time to line that up and then we're going to sew along that long straight edge. And just make sure it's lined up nicely. And then just adjust it as you go. Just try not to pull the fabric either. Right. going to press that now fab 
So this one just naturally falls over to the darker triangle. So mm -hmm. if that's the way the fabric wants to go, that's where I'm just going to let it fall because it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be... Um, Lovely. And then there's your... Block three. Block three. One easy as one, two, three. Yeah. That's it. You said it was easy. Very easy. And achievable. Um, now, last couple remaining. If you want this, please check out your baskets. So many of you are going to miss out on this. 30 of you with it in your baskets. There are two kits left and that's it. When it's gone, it's gone. As beautiful, as classy, as elegant as it is, this is our limited stock. We've got two left. 30 of you have it in your baskets. This is always the point where people think, oh, oh, I've missed out now. If it's in your basket and you click check out first, it's yours. $49.99 today is your first split pay. There are three split pays available. If you'd like them, it's just an option you pick at the end. No interest, no credit checks, no forms. Just click uh, split pay. Um, we don't have this fabric by the half meter. We don't have this for sale as a collection of fabric at the moment. It is very, very beautiful, isn't it? I do think it's lovely, but we don't have it. I don't think we've got any plans to have it by the half meter, only in this quilt kit. Okay, last, last couple. Now, I've got a couple of bundles for potential backings. These are our cotton solids. These are 44 inches wide, so you would need to piece these together. We'll do the green first. This is called Misty Blue, but it is this lovely soft sort of sagey green. I'm just going to grab a couple of fabrics just so you can see how beautifully that goes. Yeah, that's that's a really that's a really nice that's a really nice match actually, isn't it? So that would be lovely for the backing. You can see how that would work. You could even, here's a thought, you could even get yourself some of the, misty, the, the backing bundle and mix it into your piecing. Mm. I, I, ridiculous, it's called Misty Blue. I've no idea why. <laughs> it's green. It is definitely green. Yeah. I know we all have differing opinions about colour, but that is definitely green. But that would go really well. So that's, uh, you get five metres. You're saving two pounds, 35.90. And that's a really, really economical way of backing this quilt. So that's one option. Uh, the other option that we have as a backing is dark grey. This is for your backing again, dark grey. And again, I'm just going to put those fabrics against it. Ooh, now then, yes, yes. So again, if you wanted to change up the look, you could. You could add some of this dark grey into your piecing if you wanted to make the quilt bigger. If you wanted to make the quilt a little smaller, but you wanted to make maybe some cushions or a runner to go with, you could do that. You know, just because the quilt kit is for a 72 by 90 quilt, it doesn't mean that's what you have to make. Yeah, like that, 35.90 for the backing bundle. We've talked a lot about best press this morning, Delphine. Mm. Citrus Grove. Oh, Citrus Grove. It's one of their new scents, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the first time I've seen that one today. What do you think of it? Oh, it's lovely. And they've got these, yeah. And they're not overpowering, are they? I think sometimes the scented products can be a bit sort of nasal irritating. This isn't at all. This smells fresh and natural. If, yeah, you know what I mean, though? Sometimes smells are really like, ow, yeah. ooh. Mm. Citrus can be a bit, ah, oh, acidic. This isn't. It's a lovely soft, like the natural scent of a bowl of oranges and of lemons and limes, rather. Gorgeous. That's lovely. At uh, 11 99 they go on for, well, almost forever. Um, I've also got lavender fields. I love lavender. I have to take the lid off, yes. though, because I've got to be able to smell it. Do you love this one? Mm, I love lavender. Come and have a sniff. If you love lavender. I love a bit of lavender. I like, uh, I like going to the um, lavender fields in the Cotswolds. Oh, lovely. We've well, got to come to Yorkshire. Oh, yeah. Yorkshire lavender. 
Yeah, Yorkshire that's lovely. lavender. That is beautiful. Mm. Oh, yummy. Again, it's a soft fragrance. It's not harsh. It doesn't smell chemically. It smells soft and natural. You know, like kind of lavender plants that have been, you know, kind of almost baked in the sun, midsummer, mm. where there's that real kind of lovely warm scent of lavender. Beautiful. 11 99 again for that. Any last words from you, Delphine? No, just pay attention to the placement guide. It gives you it all there of how, what block needs to go where and which rotation. And so these are the ones that I've done earlier. And you just, uh, just make sure it's, um, yeah, you just put them all in the right order. But really, really simple. Enjoy it. You know, just make sure you pay attention to where you're pressing your seams. Uh, and, um, and yeah, in, yeah, enjoy it. It's lovely. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Delphine. That quilt kit has now sold out. So well done if you got yours. Have great fun piecing it. OK, Delphine, we're going to see you in an hour. Uh -huh. uh, yep. Can't wait for that with a brand new bag. Yes, brand new And bags. one of my favourite bags from you as well, the Amelie and the Fleur. Right, up next, we've got Amanda Little with her absolutely gorgeous decoupage quilt. Can't wait for this. Already going. See you after the break. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? 
check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard PMP is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says gift cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. So good to have your company on Sewing Street today. It's Friday, it's almost the weekend. We're already in a weekend mood here. I'm Stuart Hillard. This is Amanda Little. Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Where am I? Good, thank you. Are you? I am very, very well indeed. Good. Thanks. It's great to see you. Not seen you for ages. I, I couldn't remember, you know, last time we'd worked together. But no. It's been a while. It's been a while. You've been busy. I My have, goodness yes. me, that quilt thank is you. stunning. I don't know about you, Amanda, I'm ready for spring. It's got that... So ready for spring. Spring feel about it, hasn't it? Totally. It's like, um, I don't know, there are no tulips on it, but it's giving me kind of all the, you know, big bunch of beautiful tulips <coughs> vibe. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's that gorgeous colour, isn't it? Fresh, summery, just lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. It's brand new today. It's called the Decoupage Quilt. It's from Little Quilt House. That's our Amanda Little. The quilt itself is... 70 inches square, 70 inches square. I love a square quilt. I They're quite them. useful, aren't they? I always make square quilts. I love square quilts. You get all your fabric here for your quilt top and binding. The price is amazing. Look at that, under 90 pounds. It's 70 inches square. Uh, you've got all brand new fabrics here. I'm gonna show you what you're getting. So you've got this I mean, I think there's a lot of colour in this quilt, but I'm absolutely in love with these black and white prints. And the gingham as well. It's really, this. Um... Look, this is absolutely elegant. That is so... Look at this one. It is such a beautiful, elegant pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. We've had a lot of gorgeous fabric today. You're also getting... These fat eights of beautiful florals. So you get nine of these. So we've got um, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, now, I will have these fabrics by the half metre at 12 o'clock. This is a brand new collection, including the black and the white prints as well. Some beautiful water lilies there. Michaelmas daisies. Those are rather stunning too. Just this beautiful sort of blended, almost colour washed look of course we've got some look at the roses look at the vibrancy of the roses and then this one might be my favorite print look oh look at that look at that and there's little birds in there as well hummingbirds absolutely gorgeous so you get all of those these almost remind me of you know like the seed packet Mm, yes, yeah, yeah, that's sort of, oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Then you get one and a half. This is all for 89 99 by the way. Can you believe it? 
Can you, and the pattern, one and a half metres of solid white. There's your quilt pattern. And then to really, really top it off. This is everything. This is everything. You're getting two metres of the border print. Wait till you see this. How completely gorgeous and divine is that? Oh, I love it. I love it. And the black and white gingham. Really sets this off, doesn't this? Oh, I'm just going to turn it side on. What you get is you get four repeats of this border. It's about 10 inch wide repeat. OK, about 10 inches here. So you get four of these across the width of your fabric. So it's literally a case of cutting out four long strips. Couldn't be easier. And just have another look at the quilt and see the impact that using that border print gives this quilt. Uh, it's just, it's a cottage garden. It's stunning. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. I think I've realised why it was giving me a bunch of tulip vibes. Because that block almost looks like four tulips know, yeah. coming together. Yeah. yeah, it's a variation on a bear paw, but it does look almost Ford, like a, yeah. a head of a flower. Beautiful, beautiful. And is there a fuss, is there fussy cutting in the black and white? Um, there is on this one, not on... Um, so what I tend to do is because uh, I do a couple of projects every month mm. time wise I just couldn't sit as mm. much as I would love to sit in piece um, mm. a, a sample quilt mm. so I lay it out on a panel um, and yeah I'll, I'll just sort of gotcha gotcha cut yeah. a section out and so yeah. it looks like a fussy cut but yes um, the real quilt I, th I think when you see the blocks that I've made up yeah there's a lot more movement yeah when it's not a lot fussy of vibrancy cut. as well this this uh, border print is absolutely stunning. It's just, it's a cottage garden, isn't it? We were in the country house, you know, the big posh country house for the first show. Now we're definitely in the cottage garden, aren't we? Oh, I'm, I'm running barefoot through the dew. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's where you are. You said, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> running barefoot through the dew, apparently. <laughs> gorgeous. I'm with you, I'm with you. It's divine, absolutely gorgeous. Um, you get two, is it two metres of this? Yes. Two metres of the border print. Which is more than enough. Um, if, uh, I've done mitred borders, yep. but if, if, you're, if you find mitred borders um, over-facing, you could just do them, uh, you know, sort of short sides, yep. long top and bottom, and it would still look lovely. It'd still look you gorgeous. You just wouldn't get that merge yeah. point. Yeah. Or you could even put cornerstones in, couldn't yes, you? Yes, yeah. Yeah. But you're going to show us how to do mitered yeah. borders today, aren't you? So a bit of a masterclass today. So stay tuned, set the record button. In fact, you don't need to. You can watch our channel as often as you like. So busy. I've got to tell you, half the stock of this kit's gone. Um, you know, the value of the Sanderson quilt was phenomenal. This, I, th I don't know how, but I think this is even better value because it's $89.99 for a 70-inch square quilt. Perfect for topping a double, a queen size bed, absolutely gorgeous thrown over the back of a sofa or take it out in the garden. Cup of tea, scone, yes, yeah. jam and cream. Yeah. Table and chairs. I Little hope. table and chairs. That's it. And, and just take it out into the garden. It'll bring the garden into your home as well, won't it? Uh, you get all of that fabric. A metre and a half of solid white, two metres of your border print. You also get the pattern, of course. You get eight fat eight, nine fat eights of the floral fabrics. Then you also get a metre of this black and white one here, a metre of that and a metre of that. So there is a huge amount of fabric here for an incredible price. And what a beautiful quilt you make at the end of the day. What sort of level quilter do I need to be? Um, I don't think, um, it, I mean, it, it's possible for, for it to, to be a beginner level, mm -hmm. but I perhaps think it would be a little bit overfacing for your very first quilt. Sure. Maybe if you've done, um, you know, sort of two or three quilts, the blocks are big. Um, I've also printed this just slightly smaller. Yep. Your quilt obviously will be bigger. Yeah. Um, the blocks are, are nice and chunky. There's yeah. no sort of awkward sort of fiddly bits. 
um, and it's as always, it's always a straight line. So yeah. you know, sort of set your quarter inch foot up. Use a seam guide if that helps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the only real sort of tricky bit, and hopefully the demo will show you that it's not that tricky. Not tricky at all. Is no. just to do the mitres yeah. on the borders. I think that once, is once you've done one, it's yeah, yeah. You'll think, oh, I'm going to do this again yeah. and again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, also, of course, remember you've got that quilt pattern to use again and again, and this quilt would look amazing without the um, border print it could be a plain you know just a yes, patterned yeah. fabric and all over floral it could be a stripe yeah um absolutely gorgeous let me show you the pattern on its own because that's also an option for you here it is it's brand new from the little quilt house so you of course you've got your nine blocks you could vary that of course Yes, on this quilt, you've got that border print, but actually imagine just using an all over floral or a stripe or even, you know, kind of tonal print mm, yeah. in the in the border. I mean, the good thing about a, a wide board around the outside is it increases the size of the quilt very quickly and easily. But also it's a lovely place to showcase one of those larger prints. And sometimes yes. it can be a bit hard. We love them, yeah. but it can be hard to know how to use yes. them. Yes, yeah, yeah. Or you, you, you lose them. If you cut them down, you don't see the pattern that you, you were drawn to in the first place. I mean, what about doing a K-facet version mm. of this quilt? That would look with good. some of the prints in here, some of the tonals that he does, and then use one of the, a really big, colourful print in the outer border. Stunning. Beautiful. And you get everything laid out, all of your instructions, your layout, how to do your mitered border. It's all there for $9.99. It would also be a gorgeous scrappy quilt. Yes, it would look really good with them. Um, be a lovely scrappy yeah. quilt. Because actually, even though you've you've done one fabric for all four quadrants of each block, that could be four different fabrics, could, couldn't yeah, it? You could vary and get a Similar really, colours. Yeah, and lots of movement, couldn't mm -hmm. you, if you went scrappy? Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's your pattern, $9.99. The kit. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. You know this morning's very busy, but let me tell you, we've got fewer than 20 of these kits left. Now, if I tell you we've got a lot less stock of Amanda's beautiful decoupage quilt than we would like, first and foremost. We started with less than we would have liked, but, you know, it's just the nature of the beast sometimes. But I'm already less than 20 kits left. Okay. It's been flying out, Amanda. It's been flying out. It really does look like, see, or if you've ever seen this sort of traditional Victorian decoupage, like yes. on a screen, all these lovely florals all overlapping each other. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. When everyone has checked out their baskets, I've got two left. I've got two left. Remember, if it's sitting in your basket, if we, if we start selling out, you could lose that. You could just drop out. Um, the collection, if you're falling in love with these fabrics, if you're thinking, oh, do you know what? I'd love to make a bag or a quilt. Or, they are coming up at 12 o'clock. I will have these fabrics at 12 o'clock. If I've got any of them left, don't be surprised if I start the 12 o'clock hour by telling you that I've got some sellouts. I would suspect, and this is just my personal feelings, that this fabric here could well be sold out before we even get to the 12 o'clock. And I also predict that this fabric could well have sold out by the time we get to 12 o'clock because just it's a stunning collection. It's a stunning collection. 849 a half meter. Again, though, the value in Amanda's quilt pattern. Oh, hello, just a minute, just a minute. Back you go, back you go. Wow, this is not in the kit. That's a panel. That's that was, yeah, that, that was a panel. Um, I can't remember the size of it. But um, that one, you I love it. Um, just literally quilt, you know, like a cheetah cloth. I love it. 
Oh, can I? Thank you, Kat. Look at this is going in my the boot of my car. Look. <laughs> Look. Wow. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it now because it'll have sold out. Wow. Look at that. Do you know what? Even if you're not a quilter, you could hem the edges, turn and hem the edges and hang it up as like just as a wall hanging. That is absolutely stunning. Here's your centre point here. Yes. Put your brolly. Incredible. Mm. Your brolly can come out of there on your little bistro table. Oh, yes, please. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, we've also got the border print for sale as well. You could put the border print around this. Couldn't you? You could put the border print around this because this is basically a metre square. And then if you put the border on, it's going to end up about 60 inches square with the border print. Amazing. I've got to have something for 12 o'clock. <laughs> it's very tempting just to show you everything now, but amazing. Oh, oh, okay. So the only way you can get the border print is in this kit. That's, what, that's why we're limited on stock. Yeah, you can't get the border print on its own. What a shame. What a shame. But still, you can get it in your kit. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Right. Amanda. Shall we get cracking? Make me a quilt, please. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> right, let me grab my bits. What can you show us? Okay, so we'll start off um, and we'll make a block. Yes, please. Um, all of the blocks are the same. The only um, variation is obviously the fabric mm -hmm. that you use in each one. Um, Oh, how I... lovely does that look? So, so in reality, yes, and you can see the difference, the, the vibrancy of the colours. Absolutely, yes. Um, so, yeah, we're going to break this block down, and my bits. Yeah, obviously, I'm sure you remember this from, from before. Amanda often prints a quilt, so it's like almost like a faux quilt, onto a panel, quilts it, and then we have it hanging up. But that's not a pieced quilt. And obviously, the vibrancy of the fabrics, is they're much more vibrant in real life. And also, the blocks and the quilt is bigger. The actual quilt is 70 inches Square, um, the one hanging behind Amanda is probably about 54 inches. Something like that, 54 yes, inches yeah. wide. So it's going to be a bigger quilt than that, 70 inches square. And those fabrics are more vibrant. The blocks are bigger too. Um, last few chances on the quilt kit, by the way. Do be quick, won't you? You are going to miss out. Lots of you are going to miss out. It's inevitable. But if you check out your basket right now, you will get your kit home. And remember, it's the only way to get the border print. I suspect by the time we get to 12 o'clock, it'll be the only way to get many of the fabrics. This panel has now sold out. Well done if you got yours. Arr, I wanted one of those. <laughs> Nicholas says, stunning fabrics. That was genuine. That wasn't acting. That wasn't acting. Arr, I'm genuinely frustrated some days <laughs> because I miss out on so many lovely things that I only really see when we get to air. And yeah. it's too late by then. Mm. Right. Grr. So this is, <laughs> this is our block. Um, I've sort of exploded it um, and Ooh. we're going to make um, a, a quarter, a quadrant mm -hmm. at a time and then we'll add on the sashing, the, the vertical and the horizontal sashing and you'll see how it'll all come together. So if we look at this top corner, we've got a square of the, um, the fat eighth fabric Yeah. and we then, I've only got one of these so I'll just hold it there for now but you can see how it will come together. Another one of those are gonna, is going to be in that corner. Okay. So if we gather these 
put Do you need them. me to cut you another piece or no, I've, I've, you lost one? Or? No, I, I, you know, it's sort of in your head. You think, yeah, I'll do it in this sequence. Yeah. But it's not until you come to lay it out that you'll know I should perhaps have just done. <laughs> but no, we'll make that now. <laughs> right, so we'll start off then um, with a pattern square and a plain square. Take, I'm using a friction pen. Um, you could use anything to be honest because that line mm -hmm. is going to be our cut line um, so it doesn't matter about it marking the fabric got you we're going to draw a line whoops across the diagonal from one corner to an opposite corner nice and easy again because it's white there isn't really a wrong or a, a sure. right side we're going to place those two fabrics together right sides facing Pop a pin in if you want. If not, you know, sort of just make sure that all your raw edges and your corners are nicely aligned. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just pop this on number six. And uh, does it tell you your stitch? No. Nope. Do you want me to, what do you want? Centre needle? I've expected it to say. Uh, or expected to see 1.8 or something, it's gone 8.3. Let me just have a, can I just oh, yeah, sorry. with you? Thank you, I'm going to turn it off and turn, turn it on it again. Turn it back on again. I used to work in IT, you see, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's weird, isn't it? I'll see what it does. Uh, it? Oh, I'm just wondering, the feed oh, dogs. it's gone, it's gone. The feed dogs it's were gone. down. Thank you. The feed dogs were down. That's what it was. Lovely. Feed dogs are back up. Perfect. Today. Thank you. See, I told so. you I used to work in IT. <laughs> I didn't. I can barely do emails. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'll just quickly show you. So when we take it to uh, the machine, mm -hmm. we're going to sew with a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to align the right side of our presser foot against that drawn line. So I love the demo. <laughs> Manta. Sometimes you can't see when us. it's under the machine, can you? That's no, honestly, seriously, that is a brilliant way of showing it. Um, yeah, so right side of the, the presser foot against the drawn line and you'll go all the way down yeah. and then all the way back. So it's a perfect block to chain piece. Yeah. You just... Yeah. yeah. Grum, brum. <laughs> now, I am using black thread. Um, obviously, I wouldn't use that at home. I would use, um, you know, sort of a, a very pale grey or mm -hmm. um, sort of an ecru, yeah. a, a doing neutral, it for sort of yeah, purposes. obviously yeah. for, for today we, we want uh, to be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm also, this um, is preset to 1.8, which is lovely for foundation paper piecing, but just a little bit short for me for general machine sure. piecing. So I'll just whack that up to a number two. Perfect. So whack press, it up. Whack it up. <laughs> press the foot down. Um, and hopefully off we go, yeah. Oh, Cheryl's got in touch to say, Morning, Stuart and Amanda. I'm late joining you. Beautiful quilt, isn't oh, it thank stunning? You. I've seen Cheryl's pictures of, um, she's having a, a she shed. Well, it oh. looks like a, a little palace in the back garden. Oh. It's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. A room of one's own. <laughs> but you know to have a dedicated sewing space. Yeah, it's, I think that is sort of the, the biggest, or f for me it used to be the biggest problem, having to set everything up and prep and then have to tidy, tidy away. away. But if you've got a space that's just for your sewing, yeah. to be able to go in, just flick the electricity on yeah. and away you go, it's yeah. just perfect. Do you, is it very messy? Is it... Um, Are you a very tidy worker. <laughs> Confess. <laughs> um, I don't. I'm, ooh, I've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> Have you? Um, it's <laughs> well, if you hadn't, you'd be the only crafter who didn't. So I suppose it, it's tidy, but it's chock a block. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, I, I suppose I tend to blitz it. You know, sort of. I, I can perhaps go Monday through Thursday. Uh, and stuff will just start to get all sort of piled up. Mm. But then on a Friday, I'll just go in and blitz it so oh, that we're all set good for... going. Mine's about once a year. <laughs> <laughs> right. So once we've um, pieced, uh, 
so on either side of that drawn line, yep. just do quickly open it just to make sure you've got what you're expecting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before you take your blade to it. And we'll just splice. Now, if you were doing multiple blocks, um, I can't do it now because I haven't got any more made. But what I would do, I would take half a dozen or so of these and I would line up that pencil line on all of them once I'd pasted them. Oh, I see. So that pencil line is all the way down. And then I would take my ruler, match up that line, yeah. and go through the whole lot oh, in I one. Say. Only do about half a dozen because it can get a little bit bulky. Mm -hmm. You want mm -hmm. a real good pressure Pro on your ruler. <laughs> real good pressure on your ruler so mm -hmm. that it doesn't budge. But you can splice through half a dozen ah. and again speed that process cool. up. Cool. Cool. We're always looking for time-saving tips, aren't we? Um, here's another tip from Sue about IT. She says, in an old life, I would talk to the IT department a lot, mostly because I was the only member of staff that understood what they were talking about. Uh, and we would go beyond switching it off and on again. There's another way to fix a computer. Apparently, we would threaten to dangle them out of the window by the cord. Surprisingly, it seemed to work occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to press um, whilst they're closed just to set those stitches into mm -hmm. the fabric. Um, we're going to press to the dark all the way through, to be honest. So um, to, to make that easier, have the side that you want to press to facing up on your Uppermost, uh, gotcha. mat. I also have a question for you, Amanda, while you're pressing. Yeah. It's from Joyce, who's in Nottinghamshire. Good morning. Thank you for your company, guys. Beautiful quilt emojis. Thank you. Love oh. them. What is the finished size, please? That's Joyce. 70 square. 70 inches square. Love a square quilt. Love a square quilt. It gets rid of the issue of which way is up. I Sometimes I... Some rectangular quilts, especially if they're really big... There's there's too much at the top or too much at the bottom and yeah. so I just yeah I love a square and I love symmetry. Yes, I'm a little bit um, of a <laughs> it's, a, it's a standing joke at home. I, it's it's got to be straight and it's got to be even and I will unpick and redo until yeah. it is. Yeah. Right. Well, so, we're making things that are going to be around for a very very long time. We yes, right, yeah, we? yeah, and it, it does just bother me mm. if something's slightly skewed. Sure. So this is um, sort of the block at the moment, and yeah. what we're going to do, we're going to piece those three together, these two together, bring those, and then yep. like that. So we'll just start off. I just pop a pin in at the end just to make sure that that stays level mm -hmm. as it goes through. I always think this but is think when the gremlins can sneak in yeah. and, and turn one of the pieces around. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you are having to move from sort of a dining table to another oh, room yeah. to sew. Yeah. Puff of wind and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. all gone, hasn't Fatal. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, after decades of making quilts, I still have to have the block next to me yeah. and do one at a time. Yeah. And I have to put it back where it came from and check yeah. it hasn't moved. Yeah. Well, when I was making these, I like you made the first one and then just laid the pieces out and just took them. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, have a finished block next to you so you always know so, where yeah. every bit goes. That's yeah. a good tip. I like that. And then once you've made that first one, you can then chain piece. You know, if, if you just sort of stack them up, mm. you can uh, chain piece. And I'm, I'm leaving the dog ears on. Um, mm. It's entirely up to you, but... I don't tend to, to trim the dog ears away. Um, it, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. And I do, so depending on the block that I'm piecing, I'll use them as sort of registration marks. Um, so, entirely your choice. Mm -hmm. We're going to press to the dark side again. Mm -hmm. When you're pressing your patchwork at home, would you use steam, no steam? Honestly, I would use a fingernail. I, yeah. if, if I was at home, yeah. I would just be drawing my thumbnail across there. Yeah. And I wouldn't perhaps uh, press until I've 
got most of the block, if not all of the block complete. Interesting. Um, I always, if I can, especially with yardage, I'll starch before mm -hmm. so that it's, you know, sort of nice and stable. Yeah. It's tricky with pre-cuts because if you starch, if you over starch, you, you can sort of shrink them. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll starch if I can, finger press as I go along um, and then just press at the end. If I can get away with no steam, I will, because again, I just don't want it to distort. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of the time, if I show, a lot of the time, you do need a little bit of steam. Mm -hmm. um, just to get everything just to, right. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. if, I, if I bring that there, then people can perhaps um, see the direction that the seams are going if they mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, sort of screenshot that. Oh, uh, yeah, good plan. You know, yes. sort of put, press pause. Take a picture a now. Day, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So back to the block. So we're going to attach uh, this one on to there. And again, just a pin on the end. And we'll start at this top corner. Just make sure that all your, your raw edges and your corners are aligned. And I tend to piece, um, if I can, I'll put the busy stuff on top, mm -hmm. keep the smooth stuff on the bottom, just so you don't get any flipped yes. um, seams. It's not always possible, but I'll try if I can to do it that way. So this one back off. I'm not going to press it yet. I'll just add on this um, mm -hmm. block at this stage. Uh, yeah. So pin in the corner and back under the presser foot. I think this quilt is sort of represents the garden that I would love to have, but haven't got the time or the mm. skills to maintain. Yeah. <laughs> There's a garden. In my dream. <laughs> It, you know, you know to me. Yeah. I'd love my garden to look like that all through the summer. Yeah. And there are bits that do for a few weeks, you but know. It but doesn't all work at the same time. No. Yeah. Do you know Mark Smith, who's on Jewelry Maker? He's I one of our designers know. on Jewelry Maker. He's an amazing jewelry designer, but his garden is incredible. And he's just got himself an allotment as well. So he's going to be growing fr fruit and veg on top of it. I don't know where he finds the time. Yeah. But um, yeah, really, really, do. I, I can have fits and starts, you know, I can have, but a quilt I can do and that quilt will stay blooming yeah. and gorgeous. Forever. <laughs> no green fly, <laughs> no watering, forever. Mm. <laughs> it's my kind of garden. So we've attached um, the, the two small blocks uh, or two blocks to the side. I've pressed the seam towards the pattern fabric and then three blocks in a row, I've pressed the seams out towards, again, what would be the pattern fabric. Yep. So these now will come together. The only seam you've got to be concerned about matching is this one. And because that's going to the dark and that's going to the dark, they'll just nest together. So pop a pin there, just pop the pin just before the intersection and then I'll pop one at the end. But that, to be honest, is as many pins as I'll use. And just remove the pins when you get to them. Try and get your needle as close to that pin as possible though, just mm -hmm. so that that intersection doesn't budge. work out if that's someone shouting or just getting over excited about what oh <laughs> I think it's someone getting very excited <laughs> yes it's clearance on jewelry maker oh it's all oh, right so it's exciting <laughs> yes <laughs> right so uh, uh, sorry I'll, it comes I'll... to something doesn't it when you can hear what's going on in yeah. the studio in our studio. <laughs> um so press to and I always walk about the corridors like a little mouse because I think perish the thought my foot anyone. Foot disturb anybody yeah. but <laughs> yeah. and then we're gonna press again to that darker that big square fabric. Yeah. Um if 
when you come to quilts, if you um, if sort of shadowing concerns you, perhaps pick uh, a white wadding, mm -hmm. and then you shouldn't really get any noticeable shadowing. Well, and I do have a bleached wadding actually on it's the really hour. It's really good for a white background. Yeah, I'll show you the comparison in a, yeah. in a few short moments. Now, before Amanda continues, I just want to remind you of the fabulous quilt and also stock. Now, I've only got single figures available out of baskets OK, so many of you have got this in your basket, but you do need to check out that people will miss out. People will miss out. Now, you get so much in your quilt kit, so much in your quilt kit. Um, my border fabric seems to have disappeared. Oh, is that not it now? Or? It's not there. I think maybe oh, Kat thought it was up. the panel. But OK, so you get a metre of the black and white print, you get a metre of this white and black print, so elegant. You get fat eighths of nine different, excuse me, nine different floral fabrics. There's roses and almost like little buttercups, um, Michaelmas daisies, water lilies, blue flowers, pink flowers, I don't know the names of those, irises, thank you, all these beautiful and also of course the multi floral and then you also get one and a half meters of white fabric so already like one, two, three, four and a half plus an eighth so four and a half, six and a half, more than six and a half metres of fabric, including this incredible, incredible border print. Now, I'm just going to hold this side on for a second so you can see all four repeats. Look at the colours in there. It's so vibrant. But I, I think my favourite bit about what they've done is putting the black gingham, the black and white gingham, because I love bright colours with black but sometimes it can make it a bit heavy yes yeah yeah and you don't always want that deep drama but you do want something to show off the vibrant color so the white will show off that 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 rich color but also that bit of black and white really makes it pop and defines the edge beautifully mm -hmm. i think this is stunning absolutely stunning um can you imagine if your garden looked like this? Maybe some of your gardens do look like this. Mm -hmm. If you do, gardening tips, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, good question. Nicholas says, which fabric is used for the binding? Um, the uh, dark. Is it this one? Yes, sorry, yep. I don't know the name so it's of it. this one, Nicola. I'll just open it out, this one here. You're going to use this for I, the binding. Again, speed and laziness. Yeah. I have just whizzed round with the overlocker, um, but yes, you would bind it properly. Don't do that to your quilts at home. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. Don't be like Amanda. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> yeah, so that's your binding as well. Yeah. Oh, it's so lovely. It's so lovely. You get so much for your money. You get your pattern as well, of course, for the decoupage quilt, which you could make in so many different fabric combinations. And I know in this one, We've used, Amanda's used this border print, but a large scale print would have just as much impact. You could also do this with cornerstones. So if you didn't want to do the mitered corners on this, um, you could still use the border print, stop there and there. So I don't know how tightly you can get, but if you were to stop the border there and there, OK, like that. And there as well. So effectively, it would be like that. Do you see? And what you could do is you could put a plain square in the corners. Yeah, or you, you could do some, but you, you will have scrap, even though you've got um, fat eights, mm. there is leftovers. Mm. Um, so you would certainly be able to uh, make another few blocks as cushions. Yes, yeah. do a little bit of piecing. But you could do a variation on mm. the block as a, a cornerstone, yeah. 
I mean, I love a mitered corner and it's not difficult. Amanda's going to show us how. But I'm just thinking, if that is putting you off, don't let it put you off. There's always an alternative. Now, let's just remind everybody, shall we, that you can get the pattern on its own. You can get the pattern on its own. If you don't have the border print, that's fine. You could choose fabrics from the decoupage collection. You could still make this quilt and have a, just a floral border. Just use one of the main prints. Maybe this one. You could use this as the border. And that would still have loads of impact. You could make this with K-facet fabric. You could use this with your scraps. And that outer border could be a pieced piano keyboard mm. instead but gorgeous gorgeous center what about making this in solids yes it would work really well in solids it too would yeah. gorgeous what about william morris fabrics mm. nice lovely, lovely even um change your background from white to uh, a navy or a black oh amazing uh, like a dual tone yeah 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 gorgeous yeah. We could end up looking quite amish then couldn't it yes yeah it would very lovely 9.99 it's a brand new pattern today brand new pattern today fab okay. right so that block is now finished um all i did was uh, attach uh, the square onto the rectangle and then attached it onto another block mm -hmm. that one will be attached in the same manner there is absolutely nothing to match up apart from your your raw edges uh, when you sew that um, let me quickly do that and then i'm just mindful of the time to to get these borders uh, shown So, and that one will be pressed towards the dark fabric. I'll mm -hmm. just do it with a fingernail. This one here, I've already attached. Um, so you've got two rectangles, two light squares and a dark square. Um, press them all uh, towards the middle and then they will nest. That is the only intersection you need to be worried mm -hmm. about there. And then it's just a case of repeating. So if I just quickly show... So just a pin at that point, another pin just here, and then the rest you can just match up the corners. Mm -hmm. a really nice block that beautiful it is a straightforward i don't think that this is too complicated no, for really it. If, if you made one or two quilts you'll manage this yeah easily. Absolutely. Um, absolutely like you said not your first quilt but your third yeah. your fourth absolutely yeah. um so i would just take that to the um sewing machine again um and just sort of pull it taut uh, you know, don't stretch it, mm. but just sort of pull it taut between the pins, whiz down, mm. and then that block then is uh, complete. Perfect, thank you. So just wanted to quickly mention the white wadding that we were talking about earlier on. I think whenever you use a lot of bright white, plain white particularly, or white on white fabric um, in your quilt, it's a good idea to use a white wadding, a bleached wadding. Um, here it is, it's 6 99 per half metre. This is 228 centimetres wide. I think that's 108 inches if I'm not mistaken. It is 108. And I just want to show you a comparison. This is the equivalent wadding in unbleached. And I just want you to see, it's got a much creamier warmer tone to it the bleached white is a bright white um, it's really the only difference between the waddings and it does have that optical brightening effect 
on, on your fabrics. I think also behind like pastels and sometimes behind brights, it can also have a brightening effect on them too. So um, definitely something to consider. If you your standard is just to go for your 80-20 unbleached, you might want to go for the bleached for this project because it does have that sort of brilliant white background fabric. Experiment with, try. If you've never tried it before, of course, you can buy half a metre for six ninety nine. Make a few cushions or a table runner or a bag, something like that, and, and see the different effect. It's, it's really quite effective behind white and light fabrics as well. Now, I've also got a couple of backing bundles that would work very nicely with this quilt. Uh, I've got four metre bundles. This is our cotton solid. So you will join with a vertical or horizontal seam. This is coral, uh, four meters in a bundle. The price is amazing, 28.32. I'm just gonna lay a few of the fabrics across just so you can see, rather lovely. Just a gorgeous kind of floral combo there. Liking that very much. So that's the coral. The other option that I've got in a backing bundle of four meters is a light gray, is a light gray. So if you prefer a sort of a lighter, more neutral background or, or backing rather, remember, you're not going to see this on the front of the quilt. This really is about what you like for the back. Just a cooler, a cooler feel. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Cool, lovely. Thank you. I was just reading a message, actually. Hannah said to me, are you OK? Because I was looking a bit serious. But I was just reading a message from Sue um, who asked, do you ever discuss black or grey wadding um, uh, with the binder bar? I have mentioned black wadding I always keep black wadding in for customers. Yeah. If you've got um, a dark uh, backing fabric, mm. you don't want to be using um, natural or white wadding because you can, even with the sharpest, newest needle, mm. you'll still get a tiny, pokey a tuft of yes. wadding come through. Yes. Um, whereas if it's black, it's less noticeable. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I will mention it again. They don't listen to me. They do actually. They do listen to it's me. It's difficult to actually get black wadding in stock. It is difficult to get yeah. black wadding. Yeah. yeah. It is made, but it's difficult. Yeah. Okie doke. I've gone small. Okay, cool. <laughs> on account that the quilt wouldn't fit on the top. No, quite. <laughs> so imagine that this is the completed quilt top. You're going to show us how to do mitered borders. Mitered borders, yes, yeah. sorry. Um, so completed quilt top. I pressed it, you don't need to press it, just a you know, sort of a finger press will do, but you want to find the uh, halfway mark on each of the long edges. Mm -hmm. On the whole quilt. On the whole quilt, yes. yeah. Um, and then your border pieces. Um, and I would suggest perhaps you, you do something similar to this, even with other quilts. I think the biggest um, problem that people have um, with borders on their quilts is is, is wavy borders yes <laughs> we, we love a friendly border right but they're a ripply fluty to, to quilt yeah mm -hmm. so measure your quilt top uh, and then just mark don't cut but mark out on your border yeah. where you believe the center and the end points are going to be yeah don't cut yeah don't cut off. because it <laughs> you need them longer quite yeah. a bit longer yeah. than the quilt yeah uh, uh, but even on an ordinary quilt, you know, when you're doing sort of uh, short sides, long top mm -hmm. and bottom borders, I would still leave it longer um, and, and match it up. Because if, if you've measured, you know, sort of, you've measured your quilt top, measured your border, they, they should fit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think where people come unstuck is that they just, right, we'll start at the top. Yep. Pop that under the foot, away we go, and, and you end, end up, up, and well, you just end up somehow with, with fullness that when you then turn it back, um, you've got sort of wavy borders, or else if you've pulled it too tight, you've got tight borders and a bit of a TP mm -hmm. quilt top going on. Mm -hmm. So it is, I, I think it's worth just measuring. Um, so what we're going to do is just match up that centre point. And what I've done here 
I've measured this block just for um, demonstration purposes. It's 12 and a half inches unfinished. So I've measured out six and a quarter from each side mm -hmm. and that will match up, that end mark, that six and a quarter, will match up with the quilt top. But I've also drawn another mark, a quarter inch short of that, mm -hmm. and that's going to be the end point for the stitch line. Yes. And you've done that at both ends? I've done that at both ends. So six and a quarter wants to match up with the, the edge of the quilt top, but we're only going to sew to six. So we're sewing 12, we're in, in yep. fact the... So you start and finish your sewing line a quarter, a quarter of an inch yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, and you'll just sew with a quarter of an inch. And then again, I would just pull smooth between those pins. Um, and you're going to do that on all four sides. So you will end up... And you sew them on yes. all four sides. So, and the best way I find to sew for mitered borders is if your machine has got the lock stitch function, yeah. um, and and you're not sort of running the risk then of uh, reverse stitching and you know sort of over shooting your quarter inch mark. Mm -hmm. So a lock stitch, if possible. If you've not got a lock stitch. What I would do is um, sew forwards. Uh, let me just show you on this. So I would sew forwards, um, starting at the, the end. So maybe four stitches forwards, lift the presser foot, twirl the um, fabric around, and then stitch back over that line. Let me take that. So you've, you've got a, a, a definite stop-start point. Got you. Uh, if you can't trust your reverse, if, mm -hmm. if you go a little bit squiffed, stitch forwards and turn around. So there's all our four sides. You'll see there that we've got that sort of quarter of an inch yeah. um, that, that we've not stitched up to. Yeah. So just fold your quilt top in half diagonally. <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, should have said, I've pressed the um, seams towards the border fabric. And what you're going to do now, because you've got these tails left over, we can pop some pins in and keep those nice and secure together. So, that so they you've don't just lined up your two border fabrics so that they're raw edge to raw edge. They raw, match yeah, up. Yeah. I mean, this is the bit, it's actually quite easy to do a, a mitered but it's just a different process to yeah. adding normal borders and it can seem a little scary but it really isn't no so just plenty of pins just to keep it still um and f whilst we do this we are just going to push these push your head my love just oh sorry we um you can lift it a little bit higher in, on the board oh sorry yeah the board. that's awesome Thank um you. so pins in just to keep everything all aligned uh, we can pop a pin in there although it doesn't particularly once you pass there it doesn't matter so much about this side so even though we've pressed the um, seams towards the borders just for this stage we're going to just push them back up and we're going to pop a pin just at that intersection just to keep that still and then we're going to take our ruler which should have, hang on, let's get this the right way around. <laughs> 45 inch line, mm -hmm. but I want it to go that <laughs> way. I always struggle. <laughs> right. I always end up turning my ruler oh, so over, so I'm looking at the wrong side. I was going to say, I think side. that's the only way I can do it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, um, I do that. I so do. just push these. You just get used to your own rulers, don't you, at home? Yeah, you now do. I've lost the mark completely. No, I'm just, I'll just do it. So, uh, we know that this is going to be 45 degrees, so just pop those intersections on that stitch line. Make sure that that's level. Make sure that it's level at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then just draw a diagonal line from that intersection all the way across. We need a new friction pen. I, know, I don't know... 
I'm guessing they must dry out. I've had this mm. one for for ages, but uh, and then just a couple of pins across. Keep that pin in for now, just until you've got it to the machine. Um, and again, if you've got the lock stitch function, this is the ideal time to use it. Mm -hmm. If not, just... Uh, actually, I'm just going to put that back to one so that my needle now is centred. That's it. Just take that pin out. I will reverse because I can see that we're out of time, aren't we? Okay. Take the pins out. Just check that it looks okay, Ooh. which it does. Then I'll just ever so quickly just whip that off. Don't trim it until you've opened it and checked it. And then just to iron it, we want to press that seam open. Mm -hmm. Probably better coming at it from the other side. So press that open. Do it better than I am, but and then that can then just go over the top. Mm. And then fingers crossed. And just carry on then. Gorgeous. Will you just lift it up very slightly? That's it, yeah. Just immaculate. So, oh. Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. And then on the back, it's nice and flat. Yeah. It's not going to cause you a problem when you come to quilt. Beautiful. Beautiful. It is an immaculate finish and not difficult. Not difficult. And absolutely, if you're using a striped fabric, if you're using a border print, if you're using something with a very sort of strong motif, the effect of mitering over than cutting straight is absolutely worth a couple of extra minutes just to get your border just on just right. Mm, I think it's it? worth it. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for showing You're welcome. Me how to do that. Really good. Right. Don't forget, you can get the instructions for Amanda's decoupage quilt on their own. They're $9.99. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful quilt here. Uh, Teresa from Northumberland says the corner joins look fantastic. Bit fiddly, but worth it. Thank you. I think once you get into it, it's not even fiddly. It's really, you know, I find it, it's actually quicker sometimes yeah. to put a mic on. I think if you've got a on. nice big surface, mm. um, yeah, and just yeah. take your time. But definitely worth the time. Uh, Quilt pattern on its own then, $9.99 for the decoupage. Um, of course, here done using the decoupage quilt range, but a beautiful scrappy quilt. It could be Kaif, Anna, Amy Butler. You could use your collection of scraps. It could be French General, you name it. Um, it's absolutely delightful. Border print, yes, wonderful. Um, and Dan Morris does some lovely border prints. Jason Yenta does some amazing border prints. They're ones that you would want to mitre. But if you wanted to use just a big floral or a large scale print, or even something like just a batik mm -hmm. with or lots stripes, of lovely mottled, yes, yeah, stripes, stripes would be gorgeous. Um, then you could still create an absolutely beautiful quilt. You could still mitre the corners. You could go for straight, you know, long sides, short top and bottom, or the other way around. You can do that too. You could put cornerstones in, but an absolutely delightful quilt pattern there from Amanda Little. Right, the bundle, the bundle. There is still time. I don't know how, I don't know how, but we have still got a few left. How many have we got left? Five remaining kits. 29 people of, uh, 29 of you have it in your baskets. So four times as many, not many left at all. You get a metre of the black and white print. 
you get a meter of the white and black. You get nine fat eighths of the amazing floral fabrics from the decoupage collection. You get a meter and a half of solid white. You get your pattern. And then you also get two full meters of this incredible wide border print. There are four 10 inch wide borders printed across the width of the fabric. So you have two meters in a continuous length of four borders. Really easy, so much impact from this for very, very little work. Amazing, the price is incredible. The whole quilt, by the way, is 70 inches square. 70 inches square, so a beautiful bed topper, double queen king, lovely across the back of a sofa. Take it out into the garden. Never seen a mitre like that, brilliant. Thank you, Amanda. That's Julie in Hampshire. You're very welcome. We don't often show mitre corners. I think sometimes there's just not enough time, isn't no. there, to get through all the... Um... Exactly. The stages, yes. But today we did. Thank you so much, Amanda. Okay. We'll see you in an hour. Yes. With sewing room projects. Yes. Now, before we go any further, uh, I have to say a big sorry on behalf of Hannah. <laughs> well, on behalf of us, Hannah, it's not, it's not, you know, cut, excuse me, I will be back. <laughs> Cutting mats. Now, earlier on, we had... I showed this cutting mat and we put, and, and Hannah, unfortunately, put the graphics in for the small one and reduced the price to 9 99 Now, everyone that bought, thinking they were buying the big one for 9 99 you were actually checking out on the small one for 9 99 You can cancel your order, no extra... You know, there's no charge. It's a free phone number and nothing's charged until midnight. So nothing's gone through right now. However, as an apology, Big Matt, we are going to do it. It should be 19 99 We are going to do this for 9 99 but you will need to reorder it because the code that you used before was for the small mat. So... Large one, 9.99. The code is on screen now, D-U-Z-W-7-3. All right, apologies for the hassle of that. Now, here's a second apology. The smaller mat, love this for my scrap quilting, fat quarter quilting, having next to me for my foundation paper piecing. Normal price, 13.99. We're gonna do a little apology on this. If you you already so you ordered earlier on this is what you actually ordered the small one if you don't want to cancel your order we're going to do something special for you for keeping your order in place instead of 13.99 you're not going to pay 9.99 which is what you've currently paid you're going to pay 7.99 for the small I think that's a fantastic that's deal. Really good, I think that's a bad deal. So if you ordered earlier on thinking you were getting the big one for $9.99, you're actually going to get this size for $7.99. Pa what? What? Oh, Hannah. Hannah's done it for $6.99. Right, so now it's $6.99. Oh, my goodness. So if you missed out and you want to grab it now, you can. Okay, if you haven't ordered anything yet today, you can get this map for $6.99, which is unbelievable. It should be $13.99. So if you checked out your basket earlier, you will be getting this mat for $6.99. You'll only be charged $6.99. If you want to change your order, you can cancel your earlier order. You'll need new details for this. You will pay $9.99 for this size mat while stocks last. I think these are both going to go very, very fast. Really sorry about that. Mistakes do happen. Hannah is only human, but she is a fine human. Take it from me. She's a fine human. All right, we're going to go to a little break now. Um, when we come back, we'll have Delphine Brooks with us with two bags, the Fleur, and the Amelie. See you after this. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. 
Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one P&P with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Great hour for you. 
I've got a fabulous hour, oh, fabulous morning, but this hour, we've got a brand new bag from Delphine Brooks. I think it's fair to say I love a bag. And this look is so stylish. Oh, I love this. It's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. It's a brand new bag from Delphine Brooks. This is absolutely gorgeous. Loads of pockets. It'll fit a laptop. It is stylish. It is smart. Let's get this bundle in. Let's get it in. Oh, what about for taking your records around with you? Let's jump straight in. Well, Delphine, hello. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Sorry, we're all getting very excited about the Amelie. This is the Amelie bag. Right, brand new today. So we've got first bundle for that gorgeous black and white, almost like an Aztec print. You've got your pattern for the Amelie. You've got... Half a metre of elephant grey. You've got one metre of the black denim. How stylish is that? You've also got one metre of this amazing print. Ah, oh, tapestry, isn't that gorgeous? It's so sort of patchworky. It's also a bit kind of Aztec-y. Love that. And you can use, I think even the, the wrong side of it is quite nice as well. Oh, wow. Yes, that's the wrong side. If that's wrong, I don't want to be right. How, look, there's the two together. How beautiful. How beautiful is that? $34.99 for the whole kit. Th what great value. It's a gorgeous bag. Delphine. Thank you. Absolutely love it. Big enough for a laptop. Okay. And there's that gorgeous feature fabric. This is how cool does quilted denim look? Absolutely beautiful. You've got your big deep pocket there with a magnetic snap on the front. Inside the bag, you've got another divided pocket. Again, using that fabulous tapestry. And then on the back of the bag, you've got another slip pocket with the unquilted denim. Absolutely gorgeous. Got some lovely hardware actually on this show. So, and hardware, easy to use. Adds such a stylish finish to your bag. Don't be scared of using hardware. Don't shy away. So there's our first kit. $34.99 and, and actually I think that could be for a man, for a woman, whatever your age. I think it's a really, yeah, that really ticks a lot of boxes. If you did want to put a little pop of colour in there, you could maybe use a bright colour for your quilting. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or variegated. Yeah, variegated would look lovely. Ooh, love, love an option. Love an option. Uh, second option is this gorgeous multicolored tapestry so i think this is the same design as previous but instead of black and white this is the colorful version so you've got your meter of tapestry fabric you've also got i think is this a meat is it half a meter sorry i think it's a meter meter of the tapestry a meter of the dark Oh, love that combo. That's beautiful. That's and then half a metre of this gorgeous kind of burgundy wine Merlot colour for your lining. And you're going to get a little bit of a pop on the pockets plus your pattern. That is stunning. Absolutely stunning fabric. $34.99 again. What a great price. What a great price. What gorgeous combinations as well. So that's that one. Next up, let's go green. Let's go green. I think, is this the one you're using? Uh, I'm using that, the other version of that one. Oh, gorgeous. So this is inspired by William Morris. It's got that sort of very rich heritage look to it. Fab. This is teamed with a medium blue denim. Oh, I love that. That's gorgeous. That's that kind of casual and formal coming together. Beautiful. And then that's been teamed with a mid-grey. 
plus your pattern for 34.99. And then the final option that I have is, oh, this is soft, pretty, feminine. So you've got your, this is your other sample, yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got this one made up. Let me show you. How beautiful. How beautiful. So you've got your, looks nice with a twist lock. Different shape. Do yeah, there's both? options. Oh, ace. So, there's, so in the pattern, there's loads of different options for you to add different flaps, different pockets, uh, different ways of quilting it. So I've quilted the back. Oh, love on that. that. One. And so love that, I just use the decorative stitch on that one. Love how you've got this strip of denim at the top as well. That is absolutely beautiful. So in this kit, you get your tapestry, you get your lining, and you get your light denim. And that makes that, wow, really gorgeous. You've outdone yourself, Delphine. Oh, thank you. Love it. So clever. Great. So those are our four options. Now, you can also get the pattern on its own if you would like. It's a brand new pattern today. It's called the Amelie Bag. Lots of options, a step-by-step -step guide on how to create the Amelie bag. Super easy, crossbody or shoulder bag with optional pockets and quilting by Delphine Brooks. Skill level, confident beginner. So if you've made maybe a tote bag, zippy bag, something like that. There's no zips in this, are there? Nope, no zips. No zips, no tricky fastenings, easy construction. What goes inside the bag? like inside the structure of the bag oh uh, so we, again it's optional so you can use um you can have it completely loose and baggy if you want to right uh, you can put bosal which i've used in uh, some of the bags as well or you can have also have a bit of wadding as well so again the the more obviously the more hardware and the more materials you use such as bosal that will raise the the level yeah um of uh, you know the uh, skill level but so were these both made with bosal yeah, so the bosal I used for the front and the, the gusset of that bag. Yeah. Because I wanted that one to be, you know, have a lot of structure to it. Yeah. And then on the other one, I used bosal on the back pocket. But you can do bosal on the whole thing if you wanted to. So, it's so inside here, there's a bit of bosal in, the, in here, but... So yeah. it's the front... There's no bosal in the front. So they did. So again, one's a bit more loose. Yeah. And there's no wadding in that one. That's just the thickness of the tapestry fabric. Gotcha. Wow. The Amelie bag is super. Please, can you confirm what needle we would use for the canvas? Thank you. That's from Terry in West Sussex. I just use my standard needle on my machine. Yeah? Yeah. A 90? Yeah, 90? I just use the standard, yeah. Yeah. Universal's fine, but just make sure it's one of the thicker needles, like a 90. If you go too light, you'll have a problem with needle breakage, won't you? Yeah, I said I'd just go with what's on the machine. Whatever's in the machine. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> uh, now, single-sided, fusible bosal in our form. Uh, single-sided, so one side has a fusible. If you scratch it, you'll hear it. That's the fusible. The other side is smoother. That's the non-fusible side. Half a metre enough for a bag? Yeah, plenty. Awesome, awesome. That's going to give you the most structured bag. If you want something that's a little softer and floppier, you could use H640, you could use quilt wadding, or as you said, um, you could use nothing at all. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, if you want like, that nice relaxed feel. Slouchy, yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool. Okay, great. Should we talk metalware? Bit of metalware here. So on each of the bags, you have got... I'll just show you. You've got this at the side... OK, so you've got a um, lobster or swivel clasp and you've got one of these lovely triangular fittings. OK, uh, you've also got one magnetic snap in the bag. So we've got a bundle. We'll start with gold. That's along the bottom. So you get two. Is this a one and a half inch? Yes. Aperture. So you've got your one and a half inch aperture uh, swivel or lobster class, two of those, two gold triangular, um, <coughs> excuse me, they do the job of a D-ring, but they're a lot more stylish and kind of chunky. And then you also get a gold magnetic snap for the fastening 
for £9.56. So five items there, all in gold. Great price. Now we've also got a silver option. So the silver option we'll put up next. So again, you've got silver magnetic snap, two silver triangular uh, rings and two silver one and a half inch aperture swivel clasps. And then the last option is rainbow. OK, so this is that kind of oil on water, AB, Aurora Borealis, iridescent kind of. So you get your two um, swivel class, your two um, triangular and then a silver magnetic snap. OK, for 10.56. If you want to get the twist locks, the twist lock, absolutely beautiful. I've been using these obsessively recently. They're absolutely gorgeous. So the twist lock. I showed it on the other side. So, so stylish. You put, sorry. Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh. <laughs> Talking to myself. In the bronze, in the bronze. These are easy to fit. We'll talk it through. Easy to fit. There's the bronze butterfly. Okay. In gold, I'll just compare the two. So the gold is almost rosy gold. Rather than yellowy gold, it's a sort of rosy gold tone. A bit more subtle, perhaps, yeah. And then, last of all, the silver. There's the silver. I think if in doubt, silver's good because it reflects the colours that it's next to. It's a bit more of a neutral metal silver, I think. Four ninety nine, right? Okay, great. Should we dive in? Let's yeah. dive in. Right then. So your pattern. So like I said, there's loads of different options that you've got within the pattern itself. So you can, if you want to, take the instructions out of the, the take the um, templates from the back of the instructions, or you can, if you want to, um, if you want to keep your instructions intact, I recommend that you trace over the um, pattern. Okay. Or, or photocopy it onto paper. If you are going to trace it, then you probably need a light box just to um, put some, tape some paper together and use a light box to help you trace over the mm -hmm. pattern. Mm -hmm. So, if in the pattern, you will have, so your outside, your main fabric, your main bag template. Now, again, you can, there's so many options, you can even adjust the height of it. You can change your pockets and everything. So, on the instructions, this will be your main outside template. So obviously it's just the one half. So when you're cutting out your fabric, you'll um, weight it down, you'll cut round the first half and then you'll flip it and do the second half mm -hmm. of the bag. So also on the outer back, it also gives you the two lines. These are the two different size pockets. So on what the, the black and white bag, I did a pocket on the front, so the front pocket. So I did pocket number two uh, for the front and then I did pocket number one on the back so again it all depends on how you want to use it you can if you want to just use the outer bag and the, uh, the for the front and the back and mm -hmm. not add any pockets mm -hmm. that's what's so great about this pattern is you don't have to do uh, all of these pieces so mm -hmm. that's why I mean a confident beginner or right up to a higher skill level so many different options. so many different options and again with the flaps as well so we've given you two different um, flaps uh, you've got the, the the one that's asymmetric, and you've also got the the one that's on the the front of the uh, the multicolored one. Just show you those side by side, so you can make a comparison. They have such a different look as well, don't yeah. they? Same bag, two different flaps, mm. totally different yeah. bag. Yeah. So, and then again, there's different options in how you want to quilt them, if you want to add waddings to them. And there's also, uh, Nick's also added in the diagrams of how that they would work and how they would sit. So even the placement guide of where you actually put the flaps. And you've also got your gusset piece, which comes like this. So again, what you'll, it even shows you how to put them together mm -hmm. to make your gusset. Great. So, um, so that's all your pieces. So I recommend you, you print it out like this and then you've always got it to hand. And like you say, depending on what fabrics you use, what flaps you add, what quilting, what waddings, if you add any or have any bosal, it's, you could make this in so many different ways. It will look like a different bag every time, but it's the same pattern. 100%. So, 100%. So that's your pattern pieces. So 
To start with, we'll do a pocket. So for this one, I am actually going to use some one-sided bosel. Mm -hmm. So a little tip, which isn't my own tip, because I actually got this from, uh, from Becky alexander Frost. Always cut your bosel to a quarter inch smaller than your actual fabric piece, because it just makes it a lot easier to go through your domestic machines. I'm quite lucky that I've got a semi-industrial machine, which will go through anything. Uh, but if you've got just a standard model at home, it will just help you to cool. get through all your pieces. Also, with your denims, um, people have seen me work with denim before, you know that I quite like the fact that you don't have to do it on what is the right side of the fabric. So the, the multicoloured sample that I did, I actually used what would be the class as the wrong side. Mm. So, for example, with here, that's the, this is the light denim. That's the one side of it. But I actually used the other side because I wanted yes. it to be even lighter and to give it a bit more of a rustic feel. So... Again, play around with your fabrics and just... Yeah, you can see that. If so I you just can compare see the, the two there, that's the right side of the fabric there. Or you can just mix it up. So for this one, I've used pocket number two, I believe. And I'm just going to press this onto my... So as you can see, there's... I've left a seam allowance, not well, yeah. yeah, seam allowance. So I don't like pressing it on that side. I want to turn it over and press it on the other side. Just or, be careful. If you want to go for silver metal where it's proving the most popular, it's going very, very quickly. If you want the silver set, just to remind you, that's two one and a half inch aperture swivel or lobster clasps, two triangular rings and a silver... Uh, magnetic snap for 956 the silver option is the most popular so if you want to go for that grab it now and don't just put it in your basket check it out as well please there we are so now that you can keep it as it is but that's got given it a nice sturdy feel mm. so you can leave it as it is but i wanted to have a bit of a play with um stitching so i actually quilted the black and white one using a cross hatch method so to do that, you're going to need a few friction pens. Come, help you. Come here, I'll do. sort that, I'll sort that. Right, so I'm going to do a sample piece. So that bit's all ready to go. So again, nice and smooth. It's not going to wrinkle or anything like that. So you can, with the other sample, the blue and white, the blue and the multicoloured one, I quilted the, um, the back pocket by using just say playing around with different stitches on my machine. Mm. Yeah, it looks really lovely. So, you know, this is... Because I don't... I very rarely use the um, uh, the decorative stitches, but this is a perfect way to actually make it your own. But Would you still use a walking foot with these decorative stitches? I didn't. I didn't just your use, regular foot? Yeah, I just used a regular foot. If you are ever tempted to use a decorative stitch with your walking foot, just before you start sewing, hand crank your machine through the full sequence of stitches slowly, just to make sure, because some decorative stitches, there's quite a swing on the needle. Yeah. You just want to make sure it's not going to catch. Yeah, that's a, yeah, just have a good check to make sure, because they do go so quick, especially if you yeah. pedal to the metal. Te like, technically speaking, yeah. you're not supposed to use your walking foot with anything other than a straight stitch, but we yeah, all but do. But it's just, just check it, just check it first by hand cranking. So you can use decorative stitches or you can do the cross hatch method. So if you're going to do that, I'm just going to show you on a sample piece. Mm. So you'd line up your ruler at a 45 degree angle onto, along the bottom of your... Uh, pocket or your fabric piece with a friction pen you draw your first line once you've done the first line you're good to go then so what I did is I did it by every half an inch so I'm just going to show you a couple just to show you the effect of how so obviously I didn't do it on the blue one but I just want to give you all an idea of different ways of how you can quilt it because this is where you're going to really make it your own really mm. So I'm just going to put on just a normal foot. Did you say that was a half inch or three quarter inch? That's a half inch. Half inch, lovely. But you, you can do a three quarter inch, you can do an inch. It's, it really doesn't matter. And there's loads of different ways you could have a bit of a play around with. Yeah. 
So I'm just going to put that onto a normal straight stitch. So what you would do want to do though is you want to lengthen your stitch because it, it's going to give it that more quilted look. It's going mm -hmm. to and it's going to be more even. So I'm just going to extend uh, lengthen my stitch to a three, and then you just go over the top of it. Oh, it glides through, doesn't it? Yeah. So you just do a few of these. So again, you, this, to do the whole pocket, I think it probably took me about 15, 20 minutes, but mm -hmm. this gives you an idea. I'll just do those two more and show you the other way. Lots and lots of you going for the brand new instructions from Delphine for the Amelie bag. We'll just pop details on screen for that. The Amelie bag's brand new. What I love about it is it's a super stylish bag for men and women. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can make it personal, you can make it individual. There are two different flap options. And I think as well, don't you think this would look lovely without a flap? Mm. Just as an open bag, you could put another another snap fastener in there, but have it as an open bag. So loads of options, loads of different pocket options, quilted, unquilted, you can add decorative stitching, even just adding something like a twist lock or a traditional fabric over perhaps something which is a bit more modern and graphic. I mean, totally switches up the look. A great sort of base pattern to have in your collection so that you can always reach for the Amelie and know that you're going to get a stunning stylish bag big enough for a laptop but also things like college files you know large textbooks maybe art materials it'd be really good work bag maybe paperwork um oh can you imagine uh, Maybe you're taking along, uh, well, taking it along as kind of weekend bag. Just pop a few bits and pieces in. It looks smart. It looks professional. Very nice. Very nice. Nine ninety nine as well. Full size templates, and a really fantastic tutorial throughout on how to make the bag, as always from Delphine. So then I've just gone the other way. So as you can see, it just gives it a really nice look. Even just doing a couple, yeah. it, it, you know, on a corner or something like that, it just gives it a really nice look. So I'll just show you just a couple. Oh, it's a nice idea. So like just across the flap, just in one corner, do some yeah. sort of thing. Like that. That'll look really stylish. Mm. And of course, as well, I'm thinking, uh, if you've got a, an embroidery machine, can you imagine if this flap was a plain fabric, but then you embroidered something like a big rose and tendrils or something? Can you imagine with a machine embroidery? Look lovely. I don't have an embroidery machine, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, you have to get one now. I, I love mine. The black and white bundles proving very, very popular, by the way. So, yeah, it just gives you an idea of just different ways to do it. But like you said, just doing that on a corner would look really, really cool. Beautiful, so yeah. Just have fun with it. Yeah, I like that. The black and white is proving the most popular right now. Um, I, I, you know, we have a lot of colour on Sewing Street, but sometimes there is something really wonderful about celebrating that kind of graphic black, white, grey. It kind of goes with so many different outfits as well. You get your metre of tapestry, a metre of the black denim and half a metre of the grey. This kind of, I mean, it's not completely plain. I know black can very, be very basic, can't it? Classic, mm. but basic. This is way more stylish than, than that, but it does still give you that neutrality. And as I say, you could always add a little pop of colour. It could be the thread that you use for quilting or top stitching. It could be that you put, I don't know, a little covered button on the front. Again, on this flap, you could, you could just have one big covered button on the front, just as almost mm. like a faux yeah, that, fastening. Mm. I don't know, I like to mix things up. Options are <laughs> endless. Options, yeah, we love them. So to finish off the pocket, so I'm going to put my other piece right sides together and I'm going to sew along that top edge with a quarter inch seam.
Wore love for your nails, by the way, Delphine. So uh -huh. love Delphine's nails. What colour are they? We had a tutorial earlier on, Sue. Where were you? Yeah, they're actually black. But they they had like a glitter over the top. Yeah. Once you first started painting them, I was like, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Is it a, sort of rub it on with like a Q-tip? Is it like almost buffed into yeah, the black polish? Yeah. Yeah, it's a chrome, isn't it? They call it chrome. So, and then you just flip that back. So is this the pocket? Yeah. So, for the, but again, you could, if you wanted to, do this for the main outer bag as well. Mm -hmm. But what you want to do now, what you can do, I'm just going to top stitch this. I'm going to press it backwards. But you can top stitch this, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can bind it. You can use some of the lining fabric and put a bit of binding, which I've done as well so just yeah. make like you where you would bind a quilt i'll show you that here you can see here just delphine's put a binding so just like quilt style double fold binding it's nice and then that one there and well on, i think on the back is unlined yeah so this one here this isn't bound this is two layers of fabric but you can get a very different effect, can't you? I suppose it draws attention to the pocket or the pocket can be hidden. That could also be where you have the pop of colour. Maybe, literally, when the bag is made up, all you might see is a little tiny flash of yeah. bright pink. Yeah, I think bright pink would look lovely with the black and white. Okay, so that's my pocket all done, all top stitch, all looking nice and neat. Mm. So now we're going to get the the front, because you can keep adding pockets. You can go pocket mad. I can then put another one on the back, <laughs> but I want to show you how to actually construct the bag. Lovely, thank so you. So again, you can mix up. So I think that looks quite nice, the two different shades. Oh, yeah. So it's just a matter of just having a... So that's playing. using the wrong side for the pocket and the right side for the main bag. Yeah, but again, there's no, there's no rules, you know. So you can, if you want to, just tack that down the one side. So I'm just going to put that on there. What? <laughs> one pound, one pound, one pound. They're doing clearance on Jewelry Maker. It's all quite loud here today. Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, I was wondering what all the shouts Yes. <laughs> It's all getting quite enthusiastic. <laughs> okay, and then you've got your, you've got your bag all ready. Lindy's requested that I show the reverse of the coloured Aztec fam fa family, <laughs> the reverse of the fabric, the Aztec fabric, with pleasure. So this is the colourful Aztec fabric, and this is this is the right side that I've got on top, okay, and then, oh, nice, so much more muted, so if I just, so there's the right side, there's the wrong, it's rather lovely. Yeah, the reverse sides of these fabrics are often just as beautiful as the right side. But sometimes we need to be reminded of that. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned the wrong side of denim as well, because it can be beautiful. Yeah, I think a lot of fabrics, well, I sometimes look at the back and think, actually, that's even, it's even nicer some, in some ways. So you can, yeah. But mixing them up, like I said, I'm mixing up the different shades of denim now, and I just think, I'm just thinking, what if I will, yeah, I'm going to use the... Oh, for the gusset, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So with the gusset, I recommend you use some clips. And we've been very generous again with the gusset. We've actually made it a little bit longer on either side uh, because obviously everyone's stitch length and everyone's machine's different. So mm -hmm. to do it exact and then you're out and then you feel like it's, you haven't uh, achieved it properly. So all, as, all you, as, as long as you pin, pin it together, starting from the middle outwards. Okay. So don't trim it to size. Leave it longer yeah. and sew it and then trim. And then trim, yeah. It's nice to have a bit of wiggle room as well, isn't it? Yeah. I just did a bag where it had a circle of a circular gusset and there's no oh, wow. wiggle room on those. And it is however carefully you measure, it's always a little bit of 
tweaking. Whereas this, you sew it on, you it, trim it back. Exactly. And even if you're out by a bit, you wouldn't notice. No. No. That's what makes it such a nice, easy bag to make. Great. So take your time around the curves. <laughs> I know, well, yes, um, Sue says John would be straight round to the other studio shouting, shh. He would, wouldn't he? Oh, I can Boris. picture him. Bless him. I, sometimes I think it's quite nice to remember there are other people in the building. Mm. It's quite nice to hear the sort of life around us, but yes. There's a lot of hype, isn't there, today? And yes. Lots of energy. Oh, yes. It's a very exciting day. Which is good, especially when you've been up very early. Keeps you awake. It's all the exciting projects, I think. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So you want it so it sort of folds in? Pardon me? A little bit. Like oh. that. So important that you take your time to pin, just to make sure you get all of those layers of fabric. Oh, that's a broken one. Oh. I'll put that one in the bin. <laughs> Very excitable. Yeah. I don't know, can you hear it at home or not? Hmm. There we go. Then I'm not so fussed about this straight edge. It will be fine. For the sake of TV demo. <laughs> At home, I would really take my time to do this. Sure. And you like the clips for something like this? I like the clips, yeah. Another broken one. Wasn't me. Oh, you see, it was probably me, and I put them back in. It's like bent pins. I put them back in the pincushion. I'm a terror. It's bad, isn't it? What, bent pins? Put yeah. them back? Put it back. A bit naughty, isn't it? I just think, oh, I'll deal with that later, but then I don't. <laughs> so, back stitch. Take your time around the curves again. And so you don't want any folds. You don't want it to catch. I'll just move these out of the way. And let drop them on the floor. So I'm gonna pop that bit down there. So you don't want tucks or pleats around the curves? No. If you get one or two, you can just go back in and just unpick it and smooth it out and it, mm. and it smooths out. Mm. But this is where you, you would have your walking foot on. That will help you out because I'm going through lots of layers, but I haven't got mine on, but it, it's fine. Pretend I have. <laughs> All right then, Delphine. Yeah. Pretending. Pretending I've got one on. That's a lovely walking foot you get with your machine, yeah. Delphine, isn't it? It's lovely and slim, isn't it? Slim. Quiet. Shiny. <laughs> Gorgeous. Like I said, so don't be alarmed if you've got loads of overhang on the gusset. That's absolutely supposed to be like that. <laughs> we cause much hilarity in the gallery then, Delphine. What's that? If you've got some gusset overhang, don't be worried. <laughs> I've got They're a lot of gusset. very childish. <laughs> Delphine, they very childish. And then you can turn it the other Ooh, way. Oh, now that is so lovely with the two tones of the denim. It looks really good, doesn't it? Beautiful. I like that. 
So then if you've got any little bits that you've missed, you can just go back in and go round it. Jenny needs a top tip, and I do too. Jenny from Hampshire says, I always have trouble with curbs when I'm on my machine. Should I go fast or slow to do them? Slow. I'd say take your time. Yeah, and it's not about that, is it? It's about the pinning and the... It's, it, it, again, it's the same as when we were saying earlier about preparing your fabrics. And it's also, you know, the, some things don't have to be really... If you take your time pinning it correctly, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, because obviously TV sewing, we have to be quite quick. Yeah. I'll probably... Um, for, the, for the lining bit, I'll probably just go for it. Because, but, you know, nobody will... Right. So you just trim away. Yeah, it's it's lots of pins or clips. It's do you ever clip into your Yes. Yeah. As you're going round a corner. Yeah. You could clip yeah. in a little bit. Or use some uh, pink and shears. So I was <laughs> having a wave. <laughs> And the thing is, as well, you know, Jenny, if you're if you're unsure and you're not necessarily getting the results, try pinning it, clipping it, and sew it first of all with the longest stitch on your machine. Then you, it's almost machine basting it. Check, and then if you're happy, go a millimetre over with a regular stitch length and re-stitch it. Because sometimes I think the thing that stops. Pinning helps us get the curves, but sometimes pinning actually gets in the way of getting yeah. it. It's why in an ideal world, back in the day, it was pin, tack, remove the pins, then sew. Because the pins can almost can. hinder as well as help, can't they? Yeah, and I think, especially if you're dealing with um, a stretchy fabric as well, that can, that can get in the way. Yeah. And obviously, going on the curves, they have, there is a bit more give on them. I'm absolutely loving the combo of fabrics in this kit, you know. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I love that sort of cool, light denim, teamed with it's almost a sort of pearl grey background to this tapestry fabric. But it, I don't know, it almost takes on a lilac-y look together. It's just gorgeous. Very, very pretty. Lovely. And that's $34.99. You get your pattern, you get all your fabrics, that's a whole metre of this tapestry, which you will have some leftovers, won't you, of these fabrics? Yeah. Get oh. yourself a little purse to go in. Yeah, that would be nice. Get a metre of your denim as well, use both sides. I'm going to be more Delphine in future. Look at both sides of the fabric. They're lovely. And your half metre of your lining fabric as well. Do this onto the other side. So I'm just repeating what I've do, done and attaching the back. But again, you can add a pocket here if you wanted to. There we go. And I'll quickly just sew that one on. So be careful you're not going to catch the layer underneath. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's attached. It's all gone quiet now. So again, make sure everything's out of the way when you go around those curves. Mm -hmm. If anything shifts, you can, it gives you time to line everything back up. So if you are using um, gusset for the, uh, sorry, bosal in the gusset as well, again, make sure you um, trim that down to a quarter of an inch smaller okay. as well. Uh, now, a message from Sandra. 
Morning, Delphine and Stuart. Wow, fun to travel back for. I think that might be also correct, Hannah. Oh, bless you. How much bosel do we need, please? Fantastic travel bag. Just do the previous for paperwork. Do the previous bit. I love autocorrect. Wow, fun to travel back. Bless you. Oh, wow, God. fun to travel. I love that. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Which was your favourite version of the message? I like the fun um, to travel. It would make a fantastic travel bag. Yeah, it would. Even just like a day to day bag, because there's yeah. so many pockets and. Yeah. If, well, again, optional pockets. Yeah, you could definitely, like if you were doing an overnight, you could definitely get all your bits and bobs in there, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And do I say that? I'm doing an overnight tonight in London and I've got a massive suitcase <laughs> with all my stuff. Oh, you're going to... Um... I am. What's it called? The Stitch Festival. That's it. Yes, at the Design Centre in Islington. I'll be there tomorrow. I'm hosting the fashion show. It's the Sewing Bee Fashion Show. And there are um, bees from the original series, Tilly from Tilly and the Buttons, who was in the first series with me. Um, she's there in the fashion show. And there are loads of other people from various seasons over the years all strutting their stuff on the catwalk and I will be herding cats slash hosting the whole thing. So come along, won't you? Janet Clare's there as well. Yeah, I saw that on Facebook this morning. Yeah. I shall be, I shall be doing some purchasing, Delphi. <laughs> of Janet Clare's? Well, of everything, probably, while I'm there. Yes, all of the things. How much bosel did you say? Um, it all depends on how many much you want to use. So half a metre will be plenty if you're right. buying it. Even if you want to bosel the whole bag and a pocket. I think so, yeah. That's what, that's what I had and I've made two. Two bags? Yeah. Great. So there is my outer bag. Looks gorgeous. Could you put bosel in the gusset to make it sturdier or would it make it too difficult to sew, Christine and Devon? I did, uh, the black one, I did bosel in the gusset. Yeah. And in fact, did I put bosel in the gusset? I think I did. I think oh, I did. Yeah, I did bosel in both. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. It sews fine. You, you, you gave a tip anyway, didn't you, about not having in our form in your seam allowance. Yeah, just make sure you trim it down so it's a bit smaller. That's easier to sew yeah. then, yeah. So now we're gonna th uh, do our pocket, so, sorry, our flap. So again, there's loads of different options to do the flap. So you can, if you wanted to, have a smaller flap. The only thing you need to take into account is deciding on the, how long you want your flap to be is about three inches extra because that's what's going to be, because it's obviously the flap's gonna come from the back. Mm. So if I wanted, it to be a short one, obviously you need to make sure you take into account the back. Mm. So, but what I really liked is, again, playing again with the denim, is you can, if you want to, make the pocket smaller. And what I did, actually sewed some extra strips on. Yeah. And for this, I'm gonna go for the lighter side. And I really love how you fussy cut the fabrics. Nicola and I both agree there's an owl's face a <laughs> bearing on the front of this flap. Can you see that? I think that looks like a, an owl's face. So, and then this. Sort of, with a tash. It's got a 1970s tash as well. But I can definitely see the eyes. Very bloodshot. It's had a hectic night. Busy <laughs> night. <laughs> So I'm going to sew that strip. So again, you can add loads of different details by adding the extra fabric to it. Like I said, on this, so I want it so the denim goes all the way around. But again, you can just keep it as a tapestry if you want to. So those are my pocket pieces, which I'm just going to give a press. So you've done two, one for the outside, one for the inside? Yeah. Um, uh, Leslie from Hampshire asks, love, love, love the Amelie bag. It's gorgeous. What type of thread are you using? I've just got a standard, standard thread. <laughs> Nothing fancy at all. Yeah? So. Yeah. For construction, for top stitching? Yeah. 
Yep, standard soul thread. Now, you might have been watching when Delphine was on for my birthday back in February. Delphine designed and brought this, I mean, just stunning, stunning bag um, for for my birthday. This was on the 4th of February. And this is called the Fleur. We've got some brand new bundles today. Um, let me show you. So, well, this is the same, isn't it? I think it's the same. Yeah, something's different apparently. No idea what. Maybe the denim is very slightly... Not as dark, I'm not sure. Anyway, but you've got... It's the lining. Oh, it's the lining, is it? Ah, yes, look, I'll show you, look. There was the original lining. It was like a um, slight duck egg, and then the new lining is like a sky blue. That's all it is. Thanks, Kat. So, yeah, you get your half metre of outer... Love that tapestry. Um, um, a half metre of... No, yes. Half a metre of this, half a metre of this, half a metre of this. And your pattern for the fleur. With the option of adding all this beautiful hand embroidery details. You can add it, you can not add it. I think it adds a huge amount, but you don't have to. But the full instructions, you've got all the instructions on how to add the embroidery. It's all in there, OK? So that's one option, Twenty-two ninety-nine. How do you do it? Amazing. Amazing price. Do I need interfacing for that, Delphine? Uh, a little, tiny little bit of interfacing for when you're doing the zip. Yeah. And do I have anything you, like inner form wadding? Yeah, I've used bosal and I've used wadding in that cool. one. Cool. Cool. Yes. Bows lid off form for the main body, I remember now, and you used quilt wadding for the flap. Yeah. So it was a bit softer. Second option. Second option. So here's the right side of the fabric. Here's the wrong side of the fabric. Beautiful. So this is the lighter version. And then you've got... Half a metre of the natural seeded and then half a metre of calico for your lining. That's lovely. Just a lovely, soft, neutral plushy pattern. Wouldn't this be a lovely background for your embroidery if you chose to add that? That would be lovely. Really pretty. Mm. I love calico, um, the natural colours. Oh, me too. Beautiful. Now, if you want to get the pattern on its own, you absolutely can. I will just say that when you see the pattern on its own at 9 99 the full kit for 22 99 that, um, actually, that bundle is such a keen price. But if you want the pattern on its own, 9 99 the details are there on screen. If you want to watch back the show, by the way, it was the 4th of February... It was the 4th of February, and all our shows go onto YouTube. You can watch that again. Gorgeous. Um, by the way, I am, I'm not hiding, I'm not keeping the new Eliso from Delphine, but you've got the big one, I've got the small one. And we're waiting for stock, actually. That's the main reason. We're waiting for stock at the moment. Now, uh, oh, lovely Joan from Surrey's got in touch. You'll like this, Delphine. Good morning, Delphine Stewart. And fantastic crew. I'm new to bag making and found your instructions clear and easy to follow. I added an internal pocket and may add another zipped pocket when I do the next one. It's a practical size and shape. I love it. That's lovely. And I can see the quilt behind. I recognise that one. Oh, yes. That's Leon. Leon the Lion. Beautiful. Joan's a fan. Oh, bless her. Well done. They look lovely, don't they? I've seen them in different fabrics as well, different ideas, people's different For takes sure. on things. And Joan's a brand new bag maker, new to bag making, and has done a beautiful job. Thanks to great instructions. So I'm just doing my flap very quickly. So all you do is sew it right sides together, turn it right sides out, and I've just... I've trimmed the excess and I've trimmed into me stitches because I'm rushing. This is what happens when you rush. Don't rush. <laughs> Don't rush. I'm rushing. There we go. I can just fix that bit. There we go. And turn it right side up. 
So you do your line in the same, exactly the same way as you do the outer bag mm -hmm. while you're attaching the gusset, but make sure on one of the sides, doesn't matter which, you leave a uh, six inch um, gap for Got turning, you. for when you turn it all inside out. So I'm just going to press this. Fab. Where does the time go? I know. We need two hours with you, Delphine. This is our last, this is our last hour. Yeah, I've yeah. got to go upstairs and then back home to my dog. We'll start um, Amanda's show just very slightly late, but we'll carry on the full hour. So we'll spill over into the 12 o'clock hour with Amanda. It's only me at 12. It's only me. And also, but also it's the decoupage fabrics from Amanda Little's quilt earlier. Um, and just love those, but I suspect there won't be a lot left for that hour anyway. So it might just be, you know, me reading poems. So this is your, uh, the bag flap. So what you'll do to attach it, you'll do it right sides together and you'll sew, make sure it's centre and you'll sew it along the top edge like that with a quarter inch seam. So you do that. Do you want me to carry on? Of course, yeah. yeah. Yes, keep going. You're not leaving till you've made me a bag. Uh, <laughs> I'll need a bit longer than that. Oh, I know, but only about <laughs> ten minutes. Now. This is Delphine Brooks, folks. You can do it. Oh no. No, I, no, no, no. Take your time. Take your time. Honestly, there is no rush. It's only me at twelve o'clock. So that's really the outer bag made now, apart from I haven't pressed that very well, but I could go and do that in a minute. Sure. So that's how the outer bag will look like. Lovely. So Love that fussy cutting. Beautiful. So to do your tabs on the side, this is also the same way as if you don't want to do hardware, you can uh, make your handles the exact same way as you do your tabs. Mm -hmm. So you get your uh, fabric, decide which way you want them. So we're going, oh, it doesn't really matter. And again, you're just going to sew along the long edge with a quarter inch seam and turn them right sides out. So you'll make two of those. In fact, I'll do one just so I can show you. And then if you've got a turn at all, that's great. If not, just turn them right sides out. This is where having fake nails does not do you want me to turn it? I'm all right. I'm, I'm nearly there, but I'm just trying to go <laughs> as quickly as I can. Do we have metalware left, Hannah? Tupperware? Metalware. We have. If you want to get your metalware, you could mix and match. This metalware could also be used for the fleur. Yes. You yeah. could do Amelie or fleur using this. The gold first. So gold, you get two one and a half inch uh, lobster clasps or swivel clasps, two uh, one and a half inch triangular units and one gold magnetic snap for 9.56. It's a really good price. This is great quality metalware. Everybody who uses this comments about what great quality it is. It's absolutely superb. That's the gold. I've also got silver. Here's the silver. So, so popular. Silver's a good, you know, if, if it, all else fails, use silver. It'll reflect the colours. That's your silver for 9.56. Again, with a silver magnetic snap this time. And then your rainbow, your AB, kind of purple green iridescent. Uh, your metalware is all iridescent. Your magnetic snap is silver. £10.56. Oh, you get the, the magnetic snap for free. That's not, eh? Hey, nice. Very nice. I'll take that. So to make your tab, so all I've done is turned it right sides out and I've pressed it so the seam sits in the centre and then you top stitch down the side of each one, just a bit of a decorative stitch. So and if you are using the D-rings, then what you do, you just slide that in at this point mm -hmm. or if you're going to be doing it as handles, you then, on the side of the gusset, you then just let it overhang a little bit, make sure it's central, and then you're going to sew it into place. Mm -hmm. So, but make sure you 
give it a really strong stick. Even so. without any metalware on? So, no. So, if I was oh. using the metalware, I'd ah. put that on now. Do you want some metalware to? Uh, well, I can do. So, you've got that one a little bit. Ooh. So, what you'd do... I'll have to rub it back off you at the end. Yeah. So, I won't sew it into place. But you'd place it in there. Mm -hmm. and then you'll turn it. And then you'd sew it into place along so the So it's cutting. hanging down. So it's hanging down. So when, after once we've put the line in, it's all sewn up, obviously it will, those stitches will be hidden. Gotcha. So I won't, gotcha. So I won't use Thank it. Thank you. Brilliant. So, so we're going to go to quarter past, yeah? Yeah. Is that all right for you? Yeah, well, so apart, so I'll do that. And then what you do is that you do the lining piece so I can quickly whip up. Mm -hmm. And then when you attach the whole thing together, you'll have the outer bag right sides out the inner bag inside out wrong sides out so you took the outer bag inside yes and then you sew with inside the um, the lining so all the way around the top flip it out and it's done awesome so awesome. really really simple to do and where would the flap be when you're sewing around it you s like that kind of opened out so you'll have it opened out and then all your tabs and everything in there and then once you've turned it inside out through your turning gap yep those stitches will be hidden and it will all be nice, neat and tidy and no raw edges anywhere. Gorgeous. Sounds like a good job to me. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a brand new bag pattern from Delphine. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's called the Amelie. We're going to start with the one that uh, Delphine was working on. Yeah. Which is that silvery grey mixed with light denim. So you get a metre of your tapestry fabric that features these gorgeous kind of inspired by William Morris kind of birds and florals. It's really classic, but looks kind of contemporary as well. You've got a metre of light denim. And again, be like Delphine, use both sides. You've also got half a metre of that lovely rose pink for your lining, plus your Amelie bag pattern. Lots and lots of options in the bag pattern as well. So you can really kind of make this uniquely yours. 34.99. I'm also thinking that if you've got the Fleur bag pattern already, you might be inspired to put some hand embroidery on the Amelie, kind of mix the two. So that's the first option. Thank you, Cap. Second option, we're gonna do the black and white. Again, here's that version made up. It's been absolutely flying out. It's really striking. Don't forget, of course, you can do the more rounded flap, if you prefer, still using this fabric. So you can mix and match between the two. Beautiful. So here you get a metre of your tapestry fabric, a metre of your black. Oh, and don't forget, actually, just show you quickly, the wrong side of this tapestry is equally gorgeous. Use both, why not? Why not? Um, and a half a metre of your grey lining plus pattern for 34.99. Multicoloured, multicoloured swap shop. It's a blast from the past. There we go, there's your multicoloured and again, there's your wrong side dark denim this time or a medium actually i think medium dark your wine colored lining and your pattern that's beautiful absolutely gorgeous of course you can do your own thing you can get the pattern and do your own thing lots of options what about using pu what about adding in some cork all sorts you could do with that in mind why not get the pattern why not get the pattern? Pattern on its own, $9.99. Again, lots of options. Be great, wouldn't it, as well, to post your pictures of your Amelie bag on the fans page and inspire each other, inspire us. Ooh. Show us what you do with the Amelie bag pattern. What would you make it out of? Could you make it in things like faux leather and yeah, cork? Yeah, all the sorts of, as long as you've got the right needle. Yeah. Yeah, of course yeah. you can. Just use a thicker, mm. yeah. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Done it again. Done it again. Mm, Thanks, Delphi. <laughs> but also in the instructions, if you're not sure about how to use the hardware, I have actually done instructions of how to attach the clasps and the butterfly clips as well. So, mm. so don't be put off 
but they're, they're very, very, very simple to use. Mm. All you do is put it on top of where you, uh, where you want to put it. Uh, well, these are actually got three screws attached. So first of all, you'll have to take those apart. Uh, just use a friction pen or something just to mark it out. Using a num picker, just clip out the, uh, the centre yep. and then attach it. And the same with this, all it is, I just use a num picker to uh, find the holes cool. and it covers them up. So very, very simple, but it's all in the instructions. Anyway. A-R-E-C. One more option, um, just have a look on the website. We've got some webbing. So if you don't want to make a shoulder strap, we've got black, white and grey webbing that you can use. You can buy this by the half metre, just by in multiples. Um, have a look on the website for a quick finish. Delphine, thank you so much for today. Thank you. It's been whistle stop. Me. Yeah, very quick. Oh. But enjoy some time with your doggy. I afternoon. will do, yeah. Can long nice walk? Long walk, yeah. <laughs> Take his ball, nice long walk. Afternoon. Gorgeous. Yeah. Enjoy, Thank enjoy. You. We'll see you soon. Yeah. And I'll see you after the break with Amanda Little's fabulous sewing room accessories. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items, you can spread the cost over two, three, four, or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app. Now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? 
check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Now, if there's anything I'd like to be, it's a bit more organised, especially stylishly, and especially when it comes to my sewing. I travel a lot with my sewing kits. I go to workshops here, you know, upstairs, downstairs. I think what we all need is to be a bit more organised in life. And Amanda Little's sewing organiser set, sewing storage set, is absolutely perfect for that. Welcome back, Amanda. Thank you. You're going to get us all organised then. <laughs> I don't know about that. I've had, have a go. <laughs> I've had a huge piece of Yorkshire pudding. Oh! I did toad out of the hole last night for tea. Right. I don't like the sausages in the mix. Right. They go a bit soggy. Yeah. So I do it separate. Um, but there was a, a huge wedge left, and I thought that'll do for breakfast. Tomorrow. So that's what you just <laughs> had. Yeah. So you're full of a energy. A carb. Let. <laughs> 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 Let's see what we can do then. Let's see what we can do. Let's have a look at the sewing storage set. Here it is. This is absolutely beautiful. So it comes in three parts. So you've got your bag. Love this checkerboard piecing on both sides. I have a bundle for this. All beautifully lined. How gorgeous is that? So we've got our storage bag for our current project. We've also got our little um, <laughs> needle book. There we go. Uh, little needle keeper. You could also um, machine needles, hand sewing needles. The colours are absolutely beautiful. So you've got your little book there. And then you've also got your beautiful, this is really lovely, pin cushion as well. So three beautiful stylish decorative items for sewing organization now the bundle is 19.99 and what you get for that is your pattern now this isn't just to make up the panel this is how to start from scratch yes cutting instructions if you're using your own fabric you could use your own stash yeah. brilliant you're also getting a pre-printed panel with absolutely everything on it i'll hold it up so you can see so this is outers, this is linings where applicable. Everything's the right size, the right shape. So no measuring, no maths, no figuring. I love that about a panel. Make the panel up first, learn the method. And then of course you can make loads more. Love, look at all the different fabrics that you get. This is absolutely beautiful. Do you see all your little squares? They're already marked out. Stunning. And then you also get your pack of felt. So you get some felt because you're going to need this to create the leaves of your book, the pages mm. of your needle book. So you get your felt as well, all for 19 99 Three gorgeous things to make. You get your pin cushion, you get your bag, and you also get your needle book. These are so giftable as well, aren't they? make absolutely beautiful gifts so that's our first colorway i have a second colorway oh a third of the stock's already gone okay. check out your basket please i know you're waiting to see both colorways so the second colorway is oh this is pr oh this is really pretty Gorgeous. You're going to be making this one in I'm the going to make that one hour. Demo, this is yes. lovely. Look, so you've got all these gorgeous, gorgeous, pretty, soft pastels, um, light mint green, the softest powder blue, a little bit of soft, soft yellow. It's got a little bit of a spring vibe, hasn't it? 
a meadow of flowers. This is for the lining for the bag. Imagine that, just for the lining. Gorgeous, pretty fabric. Just lovely. And I really, really love this candy stripe up here, which is for the top of the outer bag. Beautiful. Um, you also get, of course, everything there to create the bag, the pin cushion and the needle book. You get your felt as well to create the pages of your needle book and full instructions. So that's option two. Now, remember, your instructions contain all the measurements you'll need to make your own three items from scratch. So don't think it's one and done. You'll make this lots of times and elements lots of times. So instructions on their own from Little Quilt House. So, for example, you could be grabbing your stash. You could be maybe little charm squares or scraps left over, jelly roll strips that you've got left over. Bits and bobs, you don't need much of anything. Here's the little pin cushion, isn't that lovely? Great instructions to have for something you'll make again and again. And also, as I say, really lovely to make and gift. And there's your very well organised needle book. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I dream of being organised. One day. One day. So that's instructions on their own. Well worth getting those, actually, to be able to reproduce this lots and lots of times. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And frankly, anything that helps me use up my scraps, yes, yeah, is, it gets yeah. a massive thumbs up yeah. from me. Yeah. Now, what other bits and pieces do I need? What's inside the bag? Um, so I've used some bosal uh, in our form. Um, to, to make it stand upright. Great. You could use the sewing, um, the single sided, double sided as well, but I've, I personally prefer either the single sided. We've got the single sided. Single sided fusible is on screen. So when it comes to using single sided, Amanda, what do you fuse to the fusible so side? So I would you fuse, make up the panels and then fuse the bosal to the panel, to, yep. to the outer. To the outer panel. Yeah, and then yep. the lining then just stays. Um, you could interface it if you want, mm -hmm. uh, or you could leave it just single layer fabric if you prefer. Got you, but you fuse your outer fabric yes, to, your, to the in bosal. our form. Cool, so yeah. that's that. Um, what size zip do we need? So on that, that one, um, on my own one, I've used um, a 4.5. Now, that's not 4.5 inches. It's 4.5 millimetres width of teeth, okay. which is typically a, a handbag zip. Okay. Um, I, I just prefer them. But in the green sample, um, it's a standard dressmaking zip, which yep. is a 3.5 or a 3. Fine. And um, the length of the zip that we need? Um, I would get a 16 mm. just to be able to cut it down. To trim it down. All right, smashing, thank you. Um, anything else that we might need? There's a bit of in our form inside yes, the Yes, so there's in our form in the, the needle book. Um, and the only other thing then is some toy poly. Some toy stuff. Okay, well, let's do that. So we've got a bag of, uh, this is recycled. I used to be a plastic bottle. I did, <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, 4 99 for 200 grams. Loads in there. You could probably make four or five of the pink cushions. Easily, if, if, yeah. Or more. Easily. Awesome, thank you. Right. Let's go to make. Let's make. Okay, do. Let's make. Thank you. What can you show us? Right. I'll try and, and cover as, as many parts as, uh, as possible. Um, so what I've done, um, let me grab my panel, that's probably best. So I've taken both bag outer bases, both bag top pieces, and a selection of the uh, accent squares, and I've pieced them together. You're going for a two by six grid in your accent squares, mm -hmm. Just mix and match, you know, sort of whatever looks pleasing to your eye. Um, and then to that, we're going to sew the, the top candy stripe and the bottom um, pretty little butterfly print on this mm, one. It's lovely. Um, and I've already gone ahead and fused it to the bosal. 
Now you could at this, I'm, I'm going to leave mine as it is at this stage, but you could if you wanted to stitch in the ditch. Mm -hmm. I think that would give a nice sort of embossed mm. finish. Um, the only thing I would say is just be careful how much you decide to quilt because you don't want it to shrink up. You don't want the fabric right. to draw up. But I think just a simple stitch in the ditch isn't going to affect sure. your, your uh, Do we need size. to quilt it? You don't. Um, I'd say the, the group, well, I don't think either one of those two are, no, I to be honest. But I think the bosal is, is so strong. Mm. It's, um, and, and because it's uh, fused, yes. it's not going to go sort of baggy and... Sure, great. Sort of, um, instructions um, tell you which... Uh, how big a square to chop out of the bottom because we're going to box the uh, the bottom corners mm -hmm. so that's that part done um we'll do the same with the lining now i've just left mine as is but if, if you want it to be a little bit more hard wearing you could put some lightweight fusible interfacing on okay um maybe the 180 is mm -hmm. it 180 the Lyseline 180, the, the soft woven one rather yes. than the paper crinkly mm -hmm. one. Um, I, th I think that's a nicer finish. <coughs> um, and again, just cut out the two squares on the bottom of your lining. Just set that aside now for the time being. And what we're going to do next is um, create the zip. And can I just borrow that one? Is that okay? Of course, just yeah. To, so to, to get nice finishes on the end of your zip we're going to attach little tabs uh, and then eventually put a, a little pull on as well that green so bundle is very very popular if you want the green bundle half the stock's already gone so if you want the green bundle well, you know what to do um so we start off with um uh, so this one is a 16 inch zip yeah um i don't <laughs> I think perhaps you can get a 14 inch zip, but I think that's the smallest that I would go. Okay. Because we just want to be able to, you know, sort of get to the edges without um, uh, uh, any problem. I like a longer just, zip and then trim it down. Yeah. So to make those tabs, you've got two pieces on your panel mm -hmm. and we're going to fold them in half across the width. I'll just quickly press them. And then we'll grab, sorry, I <laughs> need my own bag. So, oh, you need some pins. Yes, yeah, so, pins. <laughs> and I've got some um, wonder tape in here as well. Or I'm, I'm hoping I've got some wonder tape. Yeah. So uh, you don't need the wonder tape, but I think it makes, you know, such a quick and easy job of it. It does. So we've pressed them in half. Ah, we have got the tape. Excellent. Right. It's in the side. It's in the graphic. Six ninety nine. So easy. Wash away quilters tape. Double sided. This is the stuff we love for putting in zips. And what I'm going to do, I always trim my, I know you're supposed to be able to tear it, aren't you? But I always sort of come unstuck and make a bit of a meal of it if I try I to don't tear, tear it. anything anymore. No. I always use scissors to cut everything. Yeah. You know, even like the tops off. Uh, like a sauce packet or something well, like that. I a lot cut of them off. you can't actually get into, can you? I thought please? it was just me. I thought <laughs> I was losing my strength with age, but <laughs> maybe it is that. Maybe we're both. I'd say it. I struggle with um, yeah, dishwasher tablets. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Short of <laughs> taking well, your I teeth to I it. I can't use my teeth for that. Mm. Oh no! Oh, tearing with your teeth. No. Don't do it. Well. <laughs> Actually, I probably could have just done one, but anyway. So, so you put I've, that on the right so side? So I'm putting it on the, the right side, yeah. Okay. And the reason for that is I'm now going to turn over and just press a crease oh, in. how neat. How neat. And we've got then, when those are together eventually, we've got that little Oh, tab. beautiful. And that's not going anywhere. Mine not do always move a little bit. What a yeah. great tip. Yeah. Um, so the, you'll notice it's a little bit wider than the zip, but they're big enough to accommodate that 4.5 gotcha. wide zip. Gotcha. So what we'll do, um, I'm going to start at this end because they're both essentially the same, but this one is perhaps a little bit trickier because 
this one is already sort of stuck together so mm -hmm. it's not going to maneuver but in order to be able to cut this down we've got to open this zip mm -hmm. and it can be a little bit sort of unruly Splay, when it's yeah. open yeah so to do that what we'll do first off grab a friction pen and a ruler and just draw on a line on your zip close to the teeth so that you've got then a, a lot you know sort of you know sort of where the the ends of your zip is yes um, and then if we draw a quarter of an inch past that so what we can do uh, sorry I'll grab that one. Do you want to swap desks? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So just grab uh, any old thread. And we're just going to make um, a zip stop because we're going to cut the uh, the original ones off. So okay. we're just going to make a quick... So do you do this bit by hand? I'll do this bit by hand. Okay. Just uh, say so any old scrap thread. It's not going to be seen. Um, and I'll double it usually and then just where you've put that mark no beg your pardon open the zip first at this <laughs> that's the reason we're putting the mark in at the other end you don't need to but now we've got a mark so we know where to put the pin the, the needle in and where to bring it out mm -hmm. and then just hold on to those tails we'll pop a knot in if you want and then just a few stitches just to create a temporary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. zipper stop. Okay. And slip that away. So now that is secure, the zipper will still work and only go up to those yes. stitches and we can chop off then the excess zip. Don't use your best scissors for this, no. just you know, sort of use an old... And obviously this is a nylon zip that you're yeah. cutting through anyway, yeah. isn't it? If you wanted to use a metal zip, then you would need some pliers really to remove the yes. um, teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're left now with that. I'll just trim. That I must admit, Amanda, I always, if I'm shortening a zip, I'll, I'll butt it up and then just machine stitch back and forth. But yeah. that is a better way by hand. It's, I, I think because you, you can way. keep it level as well because you've pre-marked, yeah. you know, sort of your parallel line. Yeah, very nicely um, done. So I'm just going to peel off if I can see. <laughs> and what we're going to do now is just place the end of that zip, we only want it to, you know, sort of be in there a quarter of an inch. Pop, pop that on there. Did you stick yourself to the tape? No, I, I, I was lent on the zip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so pop that one there and then this side will come over. go and then give that a real good squeeze mm -hmm. and that then is secure enough to then that's tape really underneath smart. The, um, mm. and then underneath the press of foot just you'll line yours up better I'm, I'm just sort of rushing now but um so just start to sew Oh, I say. That is hitting something in there. Doesn't like it, does it? No, that is. I think the bobbin case has moved. We will get you a different machine. Okay. We will get you a different machine. 
Let me just unplug this. I'll carry on. I'll just stitch it by hand for now. Bust the machine. <laughs> so, imagine that this was under the, the machine foot, just a ninth of an inch away from... I'm not sure if I'm going to get through with a hand needle. You're just going to stitch across um, just to give it a nice top stitch finish. Once you approach the, the zipper teeth, you might want then to just pop a, a humper jumper okay. back. Yep. Just so that your stitches stay nice and regular. I just, I just so nodded it's... like I knew what that was. <laughs> I don't know what the, the proper term is, like a humper jumper. Uh, you get one with the machine, don't you? Yes, like a the, little, the little plastic yeah, yeah. thing, yes. Um, right, okay. So anyway, <laughs> here's our prepared zip. <laughs> <laughs> and the zip is going to be, hopefully, oh, okay. I'll, I'll oh, sorry, do you want me to come and thread it? I'll come and thread it for you. Um, so the, the zip now is uh, the same width as the, the panel. Yeah. So again, we'll get the uh, trusty wonder tape out and just pop a length. Down Ooh, the hello. raw edge of the zip. Yeah. Hmm. Hang on a second. Thank you. I'll just do the one side, I think, for now, because um, oh, I'll, I'll do both sides just in case this time. Okay. So, wonder tape across the long edges. Right, there we go. We're threaded up. Okay, Let's just you. put you a bobbin. Uh, if your wonder tape is like mine and has spent too long in your bag, yeah. you can, with a really cool iron, I think this might be too warm, just very lightly press the wonder tape. Is that sort tape. of reactivated? It's, yeah, it just sort of uh, brings the glue back to life. Okay. But only with a warm right. iron or else it's going to melt. You are re-threaded. Thank you very much. No worries. <laughs> no problem. Oh, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure. I thought it's I was going to have to hand sew. It was easy. <laughs> it was easy. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, have the stop at the zip pull on your left mm -hmm. and take off one piece of the tape. The tape, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to place the, uh, the, the panel right sides facing up, the zip right sides facing down. Gotcha. And you're going to line up. I'm going to have to bring it closer. I'm not tall enough. And align the raw edge of um, the zip with the, the raw edge of the panel. Give that a good press. And what we're going to do then is bring in a lining piece. I'll pop another little bit of wonder tape on the back. Mm -hmm. You could do you want the zipper foot on your machine? Yes, please, if, yeah. if it's there. Okay. Um, you can um, baste, you know, sort of um, with needle and thread, mm -hmm. or you could just pin if you prefer. But I find the wonder tape is um, really quick and easy to, mm -hmm. to do. So a bit more wonder tape there, peel that off. Uh, and then we're going to place the lining panel right sides facing down on top. Mm -hmm. Again, aligning against the raw edge of that zip. So that everything... I think the tape does make a big difference it does here, help. doesn't it? It just keeps everything still. Because there is a tendency shifting. as well for the lining fabric to creep or the outer fabric to creep yeah. if it's not stuck down yeah. with the tape. I will just pop a pin in each corner because mm -hmm. I've not um, taken the wonder tape to the very edge. But we're going to sew now just with a quarter of an inch seam. I do um, suggest that you put your um, zipper foot on. Yes. Um, not or so I bad. could put your zipper foot on. Or, or you could have, you know, have a, <laughs> if ma one has a magical star. assistant. <laughs> um, if you've got one of the big chunky 4.5 zips, you can more often than not get away with just sticking with your standard oh, foot. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. But a, a zipper foot, I think, is probably the best for... Yeah. Um, uh, where's the... There we go. Hold your breath, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold your breath.
Let me uh, undo this zip and just a little bit fiddly to work begin with. Work hard, work hard. There we go. So you've just undone your zip halfway? I've just undone the zip just to be able to get past it. And what I'll do now is lift the presser foot again, fasten the zip back up so that I can just carry on all the way down the length. Gotcha. Without any uh, obstructions. See, it's not wrinkling, it's not pushing along at all because of the tape. And it's quite all right for your machine needle to go through the tape. Yes. It's yeah. all designed. It's... Don't use ordinary double-sided tape for this. No, um, but it's, uh, if you ever did wash it, it does wash away, as all yeah. the, the one that I use usually yeah. washes cool. away. Yeah, ours washes away too. There's no need to uh, backstitch at the beginning and the end because okay. they're going to be enclosed inside of the bag. Sure. So... What we'll do now is open that out so you can see. Let me bring those edges down. Lovely. So bring the edges down. You'll spend a lot more time than I am. But and in an ideal a good world, press. that lining is just going to fit perfectly. Yeah, that lining it? should fit. Give it a good press. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pinning it at the bottom just because it'll pull it taut at the top and um, just make top stitching easier for mm -hmm. me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. So you can see the back and the front, and then I would press, but I'm just gonna take it straight to the uh, machine and top stitch and obviously use the thread that matches but just so we can see it we've yes. got a dark thread I'm going to up my stitch length to three and a half mm -hmm. and you might um, actually no this is doing fine I was going to say perhaps a walking foot would be a good choice but it's the machine seems to be managing great so just a quarter of an inch or thereabouts away from the uh, the top folded edge And if that were in a matching thread, that mm -hmm. would look nice. It would give you um, oops, that finish. Lovely, yeah. Mm -hmm. The second side is exactly the same. Um, so we'll place another panel right side facing up. Peel away the paper. <clears throat> so just pop that one down again just match the top raw edge a little bit more tape And then take your lining piece. Mm -hmm. Where are we? That's it. That pretty pink bundle, uh, bundle, by the way, is in the graphics at the moment. Uh, that is this one right here. It's sort of, oh, kind of spring florally, isn't it? It's got that lovely minty green, pastel sort of meadow flowers with a lovely little mint green coordinate. And then look at all these lovely individual sort of almost like scrap fabrics that are all laid out. You've also got your zipper ends. You've got your some little labels as well, which is rather a nice touch. You've got the top bands as well of your bag. You've got your needle book lining. 
your pin, see this is for your pin cushion button. You've even got circles there for covering your button. Now just on that point very quickly, we have got coverable buttons. Perfect, 15 mil on the show. You only need two of these per pin cushion, so you get enough there to do three for 2.49. Well, self-cover buttons are the kind of thing I stash all the time because, you know, when you just think, what does that bag need? What does that cushion need? Mm. I know it needs some covered buttons. And I just look in, in the box and find some covered buttons. They always look smart. And I do think that it gives a very, very classy touch. Doesn't it? Very classy touch. 249 for those. Ah, thank you. Nice. So I'm just I love a covered button. I can't I can't I, must I love admit, a covered I button. Like covered, unless I can get a perfect match with a, a shop bought, you know, on, on clothes. Yeah. I'll always like this one here. Can't oh, you can't see. Oh, I've hello. covered them. Um, yeah. Oh, did you make your dress? Yes. Lovely. Yeah. It's, I think it's a pattern that's selling street do. It's the Wildwood wrap dress. Oh yes. Um so I have seven. Um, size too small. It is <laughs> bad. It is, it is now. It fabulous. Thank you. Uh, but it's a lovely pattern. It's, um, it's yeah. a really nice pattern. To Love the colour on you so, as well. It's beautiful. So I, I went for earth tones today too. I, I um, had my colour... Oh, going back, crikey. Oh, you had your colours done? 30 odd years. If it was for my 21st birthday right. and I had my colours done... And I was a soft autumn, which soft is autumn. sludge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can relate. I can relate. But, sludge. Um, it was really useful, actually. I mean, you know, oh. so, so, I, I think perhaps you already know, don't you? Or most people perhaps so know what colours suit yeah. you. Yeah. I don't know. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I find the odd colour. I think, oh, that's the perfect. And then other colours really look awful on me. Yeah. And I think... Um, or they, they say that, uh, you know, if there's a colour that you really like and it's not in your palette, mm. you can perhaps get away with wearing it as a trousers or skirt. Oh, fair enough. And then just stick with a colour that suits you better up close by your face. Oh, interesting. But, um, yeah, it was definitely, you know, it was a really lovely present. Um, oh, yeah, sounds good. Was that like Colour Me Beautiful? It was, yeah, Colour oh, Me Beautiful. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. 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 I'm I a think... winter because I'm dark and moody. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> If I was a, if I was um, a, a season, I'd probably be tundra wasteland. <laughs> no, I think I'm autumn too. I don't I know. Said, I, autumn, or spring. But there's, there's three different sorts. I think there's a, a soft, a deep, and a true. Ooh. So I'm not, I don't think you would be soft. Oh, I don't know. No. But it'd be worth. I love autumn colours, but I yeah. wonder if I might be spring. I don't know. I yeah, honestly don't know. Yeah, I'm definitely not winter. No, no, winters are, um, I think they're the only people that can wear black up close to their face. Oh, really? Um, but they're usually sort of the, the real bright. I don't know if John is a, a winter, because he can carry off all the dual colours and right. black. Yeah. yes. Um, right. I look terrible in pink. Mm. Pink looks awful on me, yeah. and I'd love like, like a crisp pink yeah. shirt, yeah. beautiful, but pink looks work. awful yeah. on me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so at this stage then, oh, this is very messy, <laughs> but anyway, it's done. Uh, leave your zip halfway um, open. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do then is just bring the outer panels together and pin them. around the edges now when you get to this top piece push the bulk of this tab now the reason for chopping the zip at quarter an inch means we've got a half inch there that is just fabric mm. and soft and thin so we can push the bulk of that into the lining make sure that everything's aligned and that shouldn't be too much of a problem then when the presser foot goes over it mm -hmm. Again, you'll probably want your humper jumper at this stage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to... Um, yeah, because the transition from outer bag to inner bag can yeah. be quite a lot, can't it? Yeah. You can end up with really long stitches. Long stitches, or else just stuck on the spot yeah. that you, you can't get past. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the humper jumper, it's worth... If you've got one with your machine and you've never used it, yeah. it's definitely worth... Um, 
having a play with. So again, just tuck the fullness into the lining side and then just try and match up. You can also match up these seams here. Now I've had a message from Christine. Get this, Amanda. Yeah. Christine's been having the morning off. She says, morning everyone, late today. You are late today. Been shopping and visiting the local farm for fresh milkshakes from a vending machine. We've got one of those Have by you? us, yeah. Delicious. She got lemon refresher flavour yeah. and strawberry. Yeah, and they come in proper old-fashioned glass bottles, huge things, and you can uh, take them back and recycle them. Sounds delicious. Um, Sue asks, not related, sorry, it's fine, any questions are good. Um, while you're both available to ask, you're the expert on, on quilting. I'm just basting a quilt and the wadding feels a little thinner than I'd like. However, now I've got it, so there. Can you double up the wadding on a domestic sewing machine? Can you do double wadding? Because we sometimes do yeah. that when we're long arm. I'll say I've, I've definitely done double wadding on the long arm. Um, I probably would just say you sort of cut yourself a, a, a small square, layer it up and see how you get on. You could end up with sort of drag light, you know, sort of like plow the fields kind of. Yeah, I suppose it depends if you're, if you're walking foot or free motion. I don't think I'd fancy free motion quilting no. through a double layer of wadding, but I probably would just walking try, foot. Yeah, try, yeah, it, try yeah. it, try it, try um, it. So, how are we on time? Are we... So, what we're going to do now is just sew at a quarter of an inch, leave yourself a decent size gap for turning, but we're just going to sew there. Um, we're going to leave this open, so back stitch at the start and end, and then restart your stitching. Okay. Um, same again there. So, we want this to be left open. Stitch there, this is all open, and then start to stitch. And then on the bosal part, you can go all the way around. Now, to get nice crisp, sorry, beg your pardon, you stop at the corners there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'm just concerned about the time and whether we need to move on. We're going to go over, we're going to call oh, right, okay. the right, yep, okay, yep, yep. yep. We're keeping hold of you, we're hanging <laughs> on to you. Um, Kirsty says, morning, Stuart and Amanda, love the colour chat. I know I can't wear pastels at all, as I'm very pale and I disappear. Uh -huh. I'm a bit like that with, with pink, although I'm yeah, not I, very pale. Yeah. I know, like, uh, a fuchsia pink, I, I can't wear a fuchsia pink, yet, stupidly, I, <laughs> when I did all my logo, mm. I had a fuchsia pink one. Yeah. Yeah, because you like the colours. I like the colours, but I just can't, but wear, I just can't it. wear it. Yeah, yeah. Funny, isn't or it? feel that I can't wear it anyway. See, I love you know that kind of light chambray blue yeah. that you get a lot of men's shirts in. I love that colour, and it, and I think it's one colour that I know suits me. It kind of makes my skin look glowy, and it's nice. But if I try and do the same with pink, that sort of pastel pink chambray that you yeah. get a lot of men's shirts in yeah. it just looks an absolute Too, yeah. dog's breakfast on me it looks awful christine you have missed delphine but don't worry you can catch up and you missed amanda's first show which was a stonker but you can catch up remember it's all on youtube later go to the website you can watch again don't you worry or if you get the app if you've got the app on your phone i always watch again on the app i like to lie in bed and watch in the morning <laughs> oh the green bundle by the way beautiful it's uh, William Morris. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? You've got the willow. And then an assortment of other really classy designs. Amanda, would this go with your, you know, like your, was it hexagonal storage bag? Oh, yeah, the, the, um, nitty, the drawstring knitting. Yeah, bag. do the fabrics um, go? Do they tone? It's a, it's a slightly, that's more sort of a grass green. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, certainly the patterns 
tie in because mm. that was sort of William Morris inspired. Mm. Um, but I think the greens might be oh, okay. just slightly a, a different colour. But I like all the greens, mix and match. Oh, so, yeah, it's, um, it, it depends if it's not an exact match, but it was no. certainly coordinate. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's nature, isn't it? Yeah. All those different greens in the garden. Don't forget as well with that panel, you also get your green felt. Isn't that a beautiful colour? Love that. You get your green felt for the leaves of your book, or the pages of your book, and then you also get your pattern. And the pattern isn't just how to make up a panel, it's full instructions, full measurements, full cutting instructions, so that you can make it again and again and again. So really lovely. And you, of course, here, yes, the bag is for storing your sewing essentials and your, your project. But I mean, that would make a lovely toiletry bag. It would make a lovely kit bag for something else as well. You make the bag. You get your pin cushion. Isn't that smart? Love the squares there. Beautiful. And the little covered buttons. And then you get your needle book, which is... It's got in our form inside, so it's nice and sturdy. And then you've got the leaves inside made out of felt, which you can park your needles in. Or I suppose you could park, like, if you wanted special pins, if you wanted to demarcate your pins. Actually, thinking about that, you've got four squares here. So you could even write using a permanent fabric pen or embroider what kind of needles and you could store your machine needles, couldn't you, in yeah. there? Stretch needles, universals, microtex, quilting. OK. So we've sewn all the way around bar the corners. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've left ourselves a uh, open, a uh, turning opening turning gap yeah turning i think gap, that makes you. today a good day because I, I so i often forget yes yeah i've done that before and had to go back and unpick um before we turn it right so we will turn the whole thing through that gap but we can go on and box these corners so it's just as simple as pulling the bag open and mm -hmm. then just matching up those watch your head my love sorry thank you Matching up those centre seams. Ah, and you just pull your seam allowances open I'll just, there. Yeah, I'll pull them open. Um, Got some clips? Uh, I'll stick with the pins. Okay. Thank you. A message. Ah, oh, lovely message from Marie in South Yorkshire. She says, hello, I simply messaged to say that you're both so lovely. Your advice and guidance is so clear and helpful. Oh, Thank you. Nice. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Again, take more time than I am. Um, you can, uh, you know, sort of leave one seam to one side, one to the other, and sort of nest it, mm. and then pull it open. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just sort of rushing through this bit now. But take the time, and you'll get a nice. What we're aiming for. There's absolutely is, no rush. There's no rush. Um, a crisp. Lovely, yeah, corner. really nicely matched up too. Don't forget as well, just picking up on Marie's um, lovely message there. All our experts, you know, it's live, it's interactive. I think that's the best thing. I love the fact that we're live and not pre-recorded because if you've got a question, if you've got a tip of your own that you want to share, you can get in touch, you can ask the question, pass on the tip, or it might just be words of encouragement. We love it, we love it. And there's no such thing as a silly question. I know so often we think, oh, I bet everybody knows this apart from me. So I won't ask, but do ask. Debbie's just got in touch to say, hi, guys, can you recommend what thickness of stabiliser or fusible fleece would you use for most tote bags? So if you wanted to give your tote bag a little bit of structure, well, would you use an interfacing for a tote I, bag? I really like Bosal, I must admit. So that's yep. my go-to for a yep. bag. Um, you can use the... Um, 
is it H640, the fusible fleece? Yeah. But that wouldn't, you know, you, your bag wouldn't stand up. That would right. be quite a slop. But if that's the look that you're after. Yeah. But uh, with the fusible fleece um, and then with an interfacing as well, mm -hmm. you can get a fairly structured bag. Um, Definitely. That just holds its shape you, yeah. with nothing in it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, Debbie, if you're making something like a tote bag that you want to be able to fold up and shove in your pocket, you know, for dog walks or quick shopping trip, then you probably aren't going to use any interfacing at all for that. Just fabric on the outside, maybe a fabric lining. Some tote bags are just single layer of fabric overlocked inside and that's it if you want to give your fabric or your bag just a little bit more firmness so you can just use a lightweight or a medium weight interfacing like the kind of thing you'd use in dressmaking just to give the fabric a touch more stability you can then go right up to something like a fusible um, fleece, which is almost like a quilt batting called H640, even thinner than that H630, the very soft padding. If you want much more structure and kind of bouncy foam, then in our form, which is your favourite, probably mine yeah. as well. But then I'd rarely use this for a tote bag. I have used it for tote bags, but often with a tote bag, the idea is that it is Un an unstructured bag um, and then you can go right up to something like Decoville which oh, is really almost thin, like it? cardboard it's really thin but really rigid and strong so you could use that for things like baskets or boxes I think until I started experimenting I had no idea really what would do what. It's really worth getting yourself, every now, maybe every month or two, get yourself half a metre of a different interfacing from, from the ones that we do or the ones that are available and try them out. Try them, see, see what structure you get. Now, if you want to try Amanda Little's uh, sewing storage set, as a pattern, details are on the screen, it's 9 99 You get the pattern included in your bundle if you're going for that, for 19 99 But for 9 99 you can have the pattern on its own. You've got all your measurements, all your cutting instructions, all your... It's a really, really detailed booklet. If you're a complete beginner, your hand will be held from start to finish. If you're an experienced sewer, you've still got everything there to guide you and Amanda's excellent tips. So the bag is done. Um, there is a long strip on the panel, and all you do with the I'll bring that across. It's not this piece, but you're just going to uh, fold it to the centre, make a crease, both ends into that centre crease, fold again, and then just edge stitch, so that you've got a mm -hmm. nice skinny little, and that then just threads through. Zip oh, and lovely. becomes your pull. Yeah, that looks really nice. And that then coordinates with those tabs on the end. So that is um, the pink colourway of the bag. Lovely. Uh, what we'll do now is move on to the pin cushion, if that's okay. Yeah, Just because sure. we've got some corners to negotiate. The needle book is fairly straightforward, so perhaps... Mm -hmm. If we do this one. Yes, that's so great. So the top of the pin cushion is just a four patch. You've got a long, on, on the pink, it's a candy stripe. I think on the green, it's that, uh, the dark green. Um, this strip is longer than you need, just mm -hmm. in case, you know, sort of, uh, it, it doesn't work out for you. Um, turn over a quarter of an inch hem, just to the wrong side, and then just line up that folded edge with one of the seams on the four patch. Pop a pin in. And what we're going to do now, let's put that pin in better. Is we're going to sew, but stop a quarter of an inch shorter than the edge of the four patch. Oh. So I find the easiest way to do that is to fold back the, the sort of the, the side gusset piece, finger crease and then just place a mark at a quarter of an inch in. And we're going to sew from there to there, back stitch at each end, or if you've got the lock stitch function, use mm -hmm. that. Uh, I'll reduce. So I'm back down to, this is a, t uh, 
I'll stick with 2.2, I think, on this. A uh, quarter of an inch seam allowance again. And be sure to either stop um, slightly short, you know, sort of either on or slightly shorter than that mark. Don't stitch over the mark or you'll become unstuck. When okay. So there we are, I've, I've stopped quite a bit shorter there. So what we're gonna do now, at that mark, we're just gonna put a snip into the fabric. Just go, not into the stitches, just up to the stitches. Oh, I see you snip in. Snip I'm it. for a little nosy. Yeah. Um, and then what we're gonna do is I just... I don't always make the best job of this when I'm do doing it myself, yeah. no. Um, so, yeah. We've stopped a quarter of an inch, put a, a vertical snip just up to the stitch line, mm -hmm. rotate that round. This should fold quite neatly if you get that level with that stitch line. Mm -hmm. And then line it up along that second raw edge. Pop a pin in there. And we're going to do the same at this end. So just fold it back and make a crease. And then just a quarter, stop a quarter of an inch short of that crease line. So there's the crease. And that's where I'm going to sew to. So sew from that corner all the way to that mark. So same thing again, just cut into that mark at the quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And you go almost to the stitching line? Almost to the stitching gotcha. line, yeah, just so yeah. you've got sort of a hinge, I suppose, to, mm -hmm. to, to pivot. So um, that's what we've got, little snippies just there. We're going to pull that round. And as we do that, it'll just fold onto itself. So just pop a pin in there. And the fold should line up with your previous line of stitching. Yes, yeah. Good, makes yeah. sense, yeah. And then, again, finger press, and then just a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to sew just up to that mark from, from that corner there. Yeah. Um, yeah, just there. Yeah. Reverse. Okay, sign again, another snip. So then just rotate, swing that round. Pop a pin in that corner, mark a quarter of an inch shy of the end, and then just stitch to there. Again, always mm -hmm. remember to do mm -hmm. your back stitch because um, it'll come apart if uh, it's not secured. Snip there. So now we're at back to um, to where we started. So just rotate that around. Pop a pin to sort that corner out. But at this point here now, what we want to do is just butt up that edge. Oh, can you just move your head back slightly? Yeah, sorry, Thank yeah. You. So just butt up that edge, turn it back, and then just trim away 
a quarter of an inch. Ah, a quarter of an inch away from a your fold. A quarter of an inch yeah. from the fold, yeah. And that is going to become your turning gap. Um, you'll leave that unstitched until the very end, if right. I show you on mine. So that then was just ladder stitched. Understood. Together. Yes. So I'll just quickly so this one and i'll show you i'll turn oh, yes. it through See, yeah it's yeah. perfect isn't it you've got two folded edges yeah. how neat what a neat way of doing it if you want to get your bundle by the way the details on the screen are for the spring meadow and that's the one that's really kind of pretty spring like you know those lovely soft pastels, the gentle greens, pinks, blues, single figures left. Uh, baskets need to be checked out, please. You get your instructions, you get your felt as well. Remember your instructions have full measurements as well, so you can make this again and again and again. But the best way to start is make up the panel, then you don't have to do any me measuring or maths. Um, learn the process and then you can make your own yeah. scrappy version. So you end up with a, a square that's stitched all the way around and then it's just a case of turning that through and you get a really nice... So neat. ...square corner. Yeah. Beautiful. That's really smart. And then it's just a case of repeating that procedure with the, uh, the bottom yeah. square. So... Uh, so do you have it wrong side out again? So I, I would leave it like that. Okay. Leave it turned. Just find the centre or the halfway point, rather, of, of one of the bottom pieces. Yeah. And then just line that up. It gets a little bit more fiddly on the bottom, mm -hmm. but exactly the same. So mark quarter of an inch shy of, of there. Yeah. Stitch across. Snip in, rotate. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then I when see. the whole thing's turned, you, you've got that. Um, that will be together there. Yes. And you've got that, that. That is sort of what you'll turn it through, and that's what you put your toy stuffing in through there. Got you. And then just ladder stitch, and it will bring it together. Fantastic. Like that. Do Fantastic. You to carry on with the needle book or not? Um, I was just going to recap the other, the other set. Is that all right? Yeah. The green set. May I just borrow the bag back for a second, yeah, please, sure, Amanda? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So the green set, gorgeous. William Morris. Isn't that lovely? Really smart. There's your bag. There's your needle book. And your very smart tailored pin cushion. And you get everything printed on your panel, including your linings where applicable. You get your felt for the pages of your book. And you also get your full instructions that you can make again and again and again for £19.99. Now, the pattern on its own is 9 99 That means you're paying just £10 for the panel and the felt, which is brilliant value. Remember, £10 extra to make all of this. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, if you want instructions on their own, use up your scraps, use up your charm packs. Uh, you can. Three projects in the pattern, the bag, the needle book and the pin cushion for £9.99. Now, we have brought back a lovely um, project planner folder cover from Amanda. Here's the... How cool is this? So a file can go in here tucked inside you've got pages you've got pockets 21st of january if you'd like a demo of that now the colorway that that one was in the one i've just shown you has a lovely kind of sewing theme isn't that gorgeous look i'll just open that so you can see that is fantastic absolutely love that you've also got your um blue coordinates You've got your pattern, you've got slate um, solid, by the way, you've got your pattern and you've even got a magnetic snap included as well for the closure for £32.99. And of course, the instructions have the measurements so you can make this repeated times. Everyone's going to be asking for one of these. Then the other colourway we've got is absolutely delightful. This is floral and kind of features some lovely pinks, purples, turquoise. How beautiful is that? 
Look, you even get your project planner label for the front. Plus, is that chartreuse? You've got a love, oh, it's apple, apple solid. You get your magnetic snap and your instructions as well. A standard A4 ring binder goes inside for $32.99. Much more beautiful than a plastic ring binder. Mm -hmm. And something, of course, as well, you can swap out, can't you, uh, yes. with the new file. Lovely. Anything else? Oh, pattern on its own, of course. Of course. Pattern on its own for the uh, ring binder cover. What have you used inside this? So that was just fusible fleece, H640. H640. Which, when it's actually stretched across um, an I4, you know, sort of one of the deep ring binders. Yep. Looks great. It perhaps looks a little bit sad <laughs> when it's not got the fold. Oh, no, it looks lovely. Um, it, uh, it does pull really yeah. nice and yep, forth. Yep. Yeah. So H640. Could you use quilt wadding? You could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nine pound ninety nine. Well, if, I'm just thinking if you bought the Bosel um, batting tape this morning, you could even use your bits and bobs of of quilt batting, um, and you could tape them together and yes. recycle. Yeah. 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 Use up your bits. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for this morning and thank you for staying on a bit later as well. We really appreciate that. Okay. When are you back? Um, next month. Okay, well, have a happy Easter. <laughs> yes. And we'll see you in there. April. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, a shorter last hour after the break, I have got the beautiful decoupage fabrics that Amanda was using earlier for her quilt by the half metre. Don't go anywhere. I'll see you after this. <laughs> Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Not only is Sewing Street live from 8am till 1pm on Sky 670, Freeview Channel 73, YouTube and the Sewing Street app. Now, Virgin subscribers can watch on Channel 754, which means there are more ways to watch your way with Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? 
then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Stitching the world together. That's lovely. We're such a strong community. Now, in our last 40 minutes or so, I have got the beautiful collection that was featured in Amanda's uh, quilt earlier on. It's called the Decoupage Collection, and it just has a wonderful look of Victorian decoupaged flowers, and there are some birds in there as well. It's an absolutely beautiful collection. Now, I'm going to start off with a mega bundle of 12 half metres of fabric from the collection, plus that impossible to find elsewhere panel. It's sold out on its own. The only way you can get the panel is in this bundle. Now, I'm going to start off by showing you the panel because it is spectacular, absolutely spectacular. And whether you are going to use this as a quilt center and put piecing around the outside edge or whether you're going to back and quilt this and bind it just as it is whether you are going to would you cut it up would you cut into it would you cut it into quarters piece it back together again with a frame maybe would you do twist and shout Twist and stitch rather, twist and shout. Would you do twist and stitch? You could do twist and stitch with it. Uh, oh, lots and lots you could do with this. It's so beautiful. Look, they've got the beautiful birds. You've got this gorgeous wreath in the center. And then you've got that wonderful black and white in the border, the polka dot and the gingham, which just really adds that little bit of drama. Also a really subtle detail, but very, very important. These black and whites flowers in the background it could have just been the flowers couldn't it the bright colored flowers on a white background but I think having the black and white almost etched background it just gives a well a whole nother dimension it's sort of multi-layered and little birds flying through gorgeous so you get your panel and that is about a meter squared isn't it it's about four well it's about 40 inches square i think that panel so you get that in your bundle you also get 12 coordinating fabrics let me show you what you get within the bundle there are some fabrics here that you did not get in the quilt kit earlier on so you get half a meter of the black with white you get half a meter of the white with black. This could be my favorite fabric from the whole collection. This bundle is limited stock now. We are down to, uh, well, there's less than 20. Now there's a gorgeous all over floral. 
open that out just that is absolutely incredible absolutely incredible very very limited stock on uh, that if you want the fabric on its own now this is a fabric that we have not seen yet this fabric isn't was not in the kit this oh that is stunning so you've got your black and white and you've got your colored isn't that cool i'm just going to hold that up so you can see the full half meter that's luscious oh I could so use this collection. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Right, next up. One, two, four, eight. Yeah, right, the rest of the fabrics we have seen in the collection previous. So you've got your water lilies. This, oh, there's a little frog too, look. Can you see? <laughs> I hadn't spotted that earlier. I hadn't spotted that earlier. There's your blue flowers. Sorry, cat. There's a little frog. Very cute. Uh, you've got your roses. I mean, it's soft, pretty, feminine. You've got bearded irises. Oh, in fact, I'm going to lay that one down. <clears throat> Excuse me, bearded iris is there. Is that maybe camellia? A camellia or something like that? Michaelmas daisies. This gives me the look of uh, seed packets. Just think it's lovely. There we go. And the pink, that is just gorgeous. So these are your fabrics. You get 12 half meters and that amazing panel which has just absolutely blown us all away here. It is delightful. You cannot buy this on its own. It is completely sold out on its own. If you want the panel, uh, the only way to get it is in with the bundle. But I mean, what a bundle this is. Now, don't forget, we do offer split pay, 55.94, the first of two split pays, if you'd like to go for that option. You don't pay any interest, you don't pay any extra for choosing split pay. It's just our way of helping you sometimes to make a purchase, um, might just make it a little easier for you. You pay one payment today, one payment next month, but you get your goods sent out this week. Uh, isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Half meters of each. Now, if you were inspired by Amanda's quilt pattern earlier on, maybe you bought the quilt pattern earlier, um, you use fat eighths of each of these fabrics. You get um, four times as much fabric. You get a half meter of each one. So um, you could make that quilt a lot bigger. Now, you don't get the border print in the bundle. The, the border print was only available in that bundle but we did talk about using different fabrics in the border and you could do a pieced border you know something like this fabric you could cut a border from this i think that would look absolutely magnificent I think that would look magnificent as a border. But also, as much as I love all the colours, I am so intrigued and thrilled with these black and white prints. And also this one here that has the black and white and the colour, I think that's absolutely stunning. Um, single figures left on this bundle. Do check out your baskets, won't you? There are limited opportunities to get involved now. The only way you can buy the panel is in the bundle. And some of these fabrics are very, very close to selling out individually. Now, you could make your own quilt pattern out of this. You, I tell you what would be lovely if you've got my Galleria quilt pattern. That would look amazing done in these fabrics. Absolutely beautiful. And you could use something like the black as the frames or the white as the frames. I'm just going to give you one last look at that panel. Wow. What a pa There are panels and there are panels, am I right? <laughs> and that is definitely a panel. It's almost like a really, really big um, shawl, isn't it? You know, because you, you can buy, very occasionally, you can buy like handkerchief panels or like headscarf panels, um, bandana panels. This is like a big shawl panel. 
actually, here's an idea. What about buying something like, see, I would go black, black velvet, okay? Face, right sides together. Sew all the way around the outside, leave a turning gap, turn it through, top stitch around the outside edge, and then hand stitch four big fat uh, black tassels at the corners and throw that over the back of a chair or as a throw. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You could pick a bright colour if you prefer for the back. And don't wad it, just have it as a throw. Um, it's stunning. I'm wondering if there's even a way that you could wear it as a shawl. You know, if you hemmed that, you know, whether you could wear that, could you? I'm thinking probably there are some clever dressmakers out there that would even turn this into, could this be turned into a dress? Could it become a top? Sky's the limit, isn't it? When you're creative and you think in different ways. What about Catherine Wright's wrap dress? You can cut that in panels. Oh, what about the shacket? What about the Tallulah shacket? Could we cut this into panels? Is that too wild? The only way to get this panel, by the way, is in the bundle. You get the panel, you get 12 half metres. Oh, Stuart, I am loving your ideas for that panel. Gorgeous. Thank you, Kate and Merseyside. Well, I mean, and I did say, would we cut it up? I think we might. I think we might cut this up. Shirley says, how about a tablecloth? It's stunning. Shirley, that's a wonderful idea. What about if you were doing like a special afternoon tea for like a special birthday uh, that would make the most amazing tablecloth you could layer and quilt it you can do what was called a coverlet back in the day summer quilts no wadding a top and a backing bagged out turned through you could tie through it if you wanted to absolutely stunning range of fabric really different aren't they Karen's messaged me on Facebook to say, hope to see you tomorrow at Stitches, Stuart. I can't wait. Yeah, the Stitch Festival is on um, at the moment and it's on tomorrow and Sunday, I believe. I'll be there tomorrow in Islington at the Design Centre. So, Karen, make yourself known. Come and say hi. It'd be wonderful to see you. Split pay is an option. Fifty-five ninety-four is your first of two split pays. But remember, you don't have to make both payments to get this home. One payment. Get the fabric home, get your bundle home, and then next month we'll take that second payment. No interest, no forms, no credit checks. Absolutely beautiful. Now, let's look at these fabrics individually because these have been very, very popular. We're looking at this one first because it's very, very limited stock. This is glorious, isn't it? I just want to hold this up because I think sometimes you need to see it. John Scott shirt. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That would look amazing on John. I think that's beautiful. What about a table runner? Because you imagine that over crisp white cotton or linen tablecloth, white napkins, Maybe with like a mitered binding of this same fabric round the napkins. Oh, now you're talking. Top table, of course, will have the panel as a tablecloth on it. But look at the birds. Look at the blooms. What about making curtains for your she shed or some beautiful cushions with? I think you've got to go all out on this. Ruffles, frills round the edge or even lace around the edge. I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was just going to say one thing I... I'm going to be a bit wild here. But I'm just thinking, right, if you made a quilt, okay, if you made a quilt... 
I'm just thinking about that pieced either into the binding or stitched on so it's that proud of the binding. I'm just wondering as well, what about if you were doing, if you were doing a cushion, what about like that, you know, or pillows? How pretty would that be? We have got this on the show. Don't worry. I'm not showing you something you can't make. I'm showing you things you can make. Right, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh, Stuart, what about a large floor cushion or beanbag cover with patchwork backing? Angela, yes, yes, a thousand times yes. All of that, all of that. If you need a pattern for a beanbag chair, my very first book, So Fabulous, had a beanbag chair in it. And you could do patchwork. You could do patchwork. Which one would you like to do next, Hannah? The white, yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah, this one. Celebrate black and white, it's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. You could mix this with any of the prints. You could mix this with a black and white stripe. Beautiful. It's just elegant, isn't it? Chrysanthemums. And I think here we've got maybe a bit of uh, lilac. There's some lilac there. This one here. Chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums there, yeah. Peony, maybe? Or a rose, I think. That's a rose. Look at the buds. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It looks like it's been drawn with a fine pen and ink. Oh, die. It would look so chic draped over your grand piano. Just a thought. <gasps> oh, my goodness me. Over one's grand piano or yours? I mean, how fabulous. How fabulous. I think Adam Brooks has got a grand piano, hasn't he? love that I don't want to say oh what about a lovely bag lining because it always seems like you're releg relegating a fabric to a lining but I mean a beautiful lining in a bag stunning stunning the floral we didn't see this in the kit earlier this wasn't in the kit this the it's in the bundle but not in the quilt kit um, this is that combination of the floral. So I suppose in a way, if this fabric and this fabric had a special kiss, <laughs> this would be the fabric. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? That would be the fabric. Love that. Love that. Would love to make bags out of that. Beautiful. So naughty. We haven't got a lot of this. Oh, I've only got three and a half metres of this left. It would make a stunning quilt border. It would make an incredible quilt back. Or oh, what about layering it, quilting it and binding it? Do a whole cloth. Do a whole cloth quilt with that. Let the fabric do the talking. Add some beads, add some embroidery, machine or hand. Loads of things you can do with that. Please let's do the roses next because I just the colour of this just brings me joy. I think that is just a joyful, joyful colour. Fabulous. These are the roses. Rose bush, in fact. Half a metre for eight pounds and forty-nine pence. <coughs> Lots of these fabrics, by the way, would be suitable for stack and whack or, um, you know, that sort of technique. Be wary of the ones that are quite small prints. You know, something like that isn't going to be so good. That would work. This would work. This would work. You know, those larger scale would work really nicely. That, I think, would make a gorgeous wraparound skirt. I think that would be so pretty. Next up, let's do bearded irises or irises. Again, that colour is joyful. Mm, apparently purple matches the most skin tones. Thank you, Ollie. Director Ollie there, little fashion tip. They've called it perennial field. I don't know. Oh, okay. Nice. 
perennial field. I can't grow irises. I've tried and tried. I'm doing something wrong. But these irises, you see, will bloom all year round. It'll be the soil. It'll be the soil. Next up, just glorious, glorious yellows. That is a dose of sunshine, isn't it? And if I was to put two of these together, I'd probably put those two together because purple and yellow always work. Yeah, they are. They're, they're on opposite sides of the colour wheel. This is called Buttercup. Yeah, it's kind of Clarice Cliff yellow. It's sunny, it's bright. It's, well, it is definitely summertime in a meadow, Buttercup. So you grab a Buttercup and you hold it under your friend's chin. Let's see if you like butter. Everybody likes butter. Oh, I thought that was the most fascinating thing as a child. My mum would do that. Or she would say, let's see what the time is. And she'd grab her dandelion clock and I'd have to blow and she'd count the blows. And that's what time it was. <laughs> oh, let's go black and white now. Enough colour. Oh, it's sold out. It's sold out. I knew it would happen. I knew it would happen. Water lilies then. With tiny frog. Tiny frog, oh tiny frog, where are you hiding? Beautiful. I see, do you see if you if you look at this from further away, do you see I see a grid, I see a diamond grid, almost like a cross hatch. I would so use that in a quilt or in um, quilting maybe to quilt lines. It does make the fabric directional. Yep, yeah, that's a good point, Ollie. It does make the fabric directional. So you might want to think about placement when you are joining fabrics together to get all of the water lilies going up the same way. So for, say, something on a bag, that would be really important, wouldn't it? Whereas if you were using this on a quilt, pieced into blocks, then personally, I am not going to worry about the direction unless I was using this in the border. And then I might cut the top and bottom borders on the widthwise grain from selvage to selvage but my vertical borders I would cut on the lengthwise grain and then when you sew it on all of the flowers are pointing up the right way so I suppose sometimes the bigger the piece of fabric the more important it is to check the direction that's water lilies pretty uh, this pink is nice this is really nice Something tells me that's upside down. That feels right. Lilac, okay. Lilac, lovely. Yeah, oh yeah, beautiful. They're quite an early summer flower, aren't they? I love the fact that there are trees that have flowers on them. Do you know what I mean? Love, love flowering trees. Right now it's the blossom trees and also things like laburnum. And wisteria, I suppose, is a vine, but beautiful. And then you get the flowering trees like um, tulip trees, magnolias and lilacs. <laughs> Lovely. Now, uh, Michaelmas daisies. These I always think are late summer, early autumn, aren't they? Don't they look painted? Oh, this is called Felicia Amyloids. Wow, have we gone full on Latin there? Wow, I just called them Michaelmas daisies. I think they are though, aren't they? Christine says, oh, Christine's thinking about the panel from the bundle. I'm thinking of a handkerchief blouse using the panel, Stuart. A few stitches across the top, leaving the neckline opening and then down the sides, leaving the sleeves open and a quick hem round the bottom. Yeah, you wouldn't even have to cut to the panel. It's a lovely idea. It's a lovely idea. So that's the Felicia Amyloids. Sounds like something the doctor might tell you you've got. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Stuart. It's Felicia Amyloids. <gasps> no, is there a cure? I'm afraid not. 
you need to sow more. Right, I think this is, called, this is rhododendron. This is rhododendron. Lovely. And of course, if you are going for the big panel, all of those flowers are then represented somewhere on the panel. So you really could pick any of these as a coordinate or for piecing or for borders. Border, border. 849 and a half metre. The last fabric in the collection is Forget Me Nots. Forget Me Nots. I have got a Forget Me Not pin. It's like blue, pale blue sapphires and diamond. Forget Me Not like pin. Oh, it's lovely. Gorgeous. Now, full bundle, if you like, full bundle. So in your full bundle, you get all 12 fabrics that I've just shown you. The black and white, all the florals, the multi-florals, that floral with black and white. Once everyone's checked out, I have literally four bundles left. That is all. That is all. And of course, this is the only way to get the panel, which I'm going to open out. We've all had so many ideas with this. It's just glorious. Isn't that stunning? I don't know if I could bear to cut it up. I think I would probably layer it and quilt it just as it is. But equally, you could put some pieced borders going around the outside. I shall really look forward to seeing how you use this. 118, sorry, 111.88 for the whole bundle. Now then, I'll uh, show you a couple of fabrics quickly. This one here. Ah, just this last one then. There we go. That is stunning. <clears throat> if... Um, if you were making Amanda's decoupage quilt from earlier on, if you really wanted to splurge, can you imagine the back of the quilt made in this? How beautiful that would be. What about if you made the quilt, used solids <coughs> or batiks for the blocks and then used this as the border? That would be beautiful. You could just use a little bit of the print within the quilt itself. Very inspiring. This is also a great place to start if you're making a, a scrap quilt as well. You take this to your scraps and find everything that goes with. Right, okay. So uh, I've got Amanda's quilt. Here it is. This, I've got two of these quilt kits available. This is Amanda's uh, quilt from earlier on, the decoupage quilt. It's 70 inches square, 70 inches square, and it features nine large pieced blocks, plus some black and white piecing in the sashings, and then the most incredible border. Now, the only way to get hold of that border fabric, you get two meters, by the way, is in this bundle and the border fabric is spectacular. I've got two of those kits left. The, the value actually is amazing because it's 89.99 and you get so much fabric there. You really do. You get a meter of each of the black and white prints. You get two meters of the white, two and a half meters. You also get two meters of the border fabric and nine fat eighths. Beautiful. You get the pattern too, of course. Um, now, if you want the pattern on its own, you can. Maybe you've been buying some of these fabrics in half meters and you want to make um, your own quilt. For example, you could just use two or three of these prints, something like these three. You could use these three, yeah? 
and you could create the quilt out of those. Um, you are right, they are Michaelmas daisies, but the Royal Horticultural Society recategorised last year and thus changed the name. Jean from Essex, you're a superstar. You are on it. I love that. So why did they why did they recategorise? Is it because Saint Michaelmas? Is it Saint Michaelmas? Is it no longer a thing? I don't know. In, I shall research. I shall research. Um, but yeah, you could make the pattern just using a more restricted colour palette, couldn't you? Um, now, I did mention the lace earlier on. I've got to show that turquoise again because it's absolutely beautiful. You get 25 metres. You get it on this card. You get it on this card. 25 metres of this lace for 14.99. What does that work out per metre, please? 14.99 divided by 25. I mean, almost nothing a metre. Look, 59 pence for that. 59 pence per metre. That's amazing. And I do think that would look incredible used to trim on a quilt or a cushion. I mean, obviously, test the colour fastness. I don't know. You want to try it. But also clothing as well. Is this a cotton? It's cotton lace. Yeah. It comes on cardboard, by the way, not a wooden spool, just to be clear. Um, that's lovely. The other one I'm just going to show, I think, is the, I think the dark grey, because I think that's rather rather lovely and rather usable this is the dark gray i could just imagine trimming like a crisp white blouse with that just to give a little extra drama 14.99 for 25 meters anna maria horner yes yes and just to add those embellishments as well that bit of lace um mm, really cool love that we're going to do the menu Where's the morning gone to? It's been a busy one. It's been a really busy one. Uh, coming up tomorrow then, that is yesterday, that's today's, that's today's, yep. We're not doing, yes, we can't repeat today tomorrow. Tomorrow's a brand new day. Don't forget, I'll be at the Stitch Festival in Islington tomorrow. It's Hayley West, our presenter tomorrow. Right, we start off with 8 a.m. Deals on pre-cuts. Woohoo, we love a deal. At 9 o'clock, Lisa Lamb is here with the Charlie tote bag. At 10, we love Kay Fassett. Yes, we do. At 11 o'clock, it's the Camellia bag with Lisa Lamb. And then at 12 o'clock, it's Sewing Room Tools. That looks like a great day to me. Don't forget, stay tuned because in just a moment, I'll be handing over to my colleagues at Hobby Maker. You don't need to do anything. Now, also, I just want to mention, I'm at Stitch Festival tomorrow, but on Sunday, I will be back here with Mr. John Scott himself. I will be uh, with him as one of his guests on William Morris day. Uh, we love William Morris here. We know you do too. And it is a celebration of William Morris tomorrow uh, on Sunday. I have got the most incredible quilt to share with you. It's called Entangled. It looks so complicated. It is so much easier. to. It's literally made from triangles and squares. You won't believe it. And I've also got a hobo bag using William Morris cotton canvas and a beautiful... Um, What's the other bag that I've got? A beautiful, uh, from my trio of bags as well, made in William Morris. Loads of lovely things. Um, have a great rest of the day. I will see you on Sunday. Thank you for your company. Take care and goodbye. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. 
Head over to your App Store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street.